All right, welcome to Salt Bay Court of Thorns. We are here to intro uh, what the new campaign is going to be with a cool little one shot. Uh, before we get started, let's do uh, introductions so you guys can all uh, show off your sweet characters just a little bit and then we'll dive into the game. Uh, let's start with Vanna. Knew you were going to do that. I know. Uh, <laughs> bully. Hello. Hi, I'm Vanna and today I'm playing Sunette Thorne. Uh, she, uh, she, they pronouns, uh, and, uh, they are a, a variant Asimar wizard and, uh, and they're real pretty. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Eric. Hi, uh, I am playing today Ludwig, and he is a Fearbolg barbarian who is very, very old and very good at killing people. <laughs> Petra. I mean, Terry, take it. I like it. Call me that. <laughs> you call me by my name. I like it. Um, I'll call you by yours. Um, so what's up, guys? Uh, Terry here playing Petra Flaylock. Uh, they, them. Dragonborn. Paladin. I don't know what voice I'm doing yet. I just was trying something and I didn't like it. So we'll see what happens today. It's going to be great. 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 <laughs> great. Great. I don't know. What do you guys got? You got chat? You got any ideas? What What do you want to hear? I, I mean, I'm out of ideas. I, I think I just end up doing this guy a lot and I just feel like... <laughs> It's, I don't believe in voices. I've talked about this many times. <laughs> but like, honestly, like I'm such an whatever, like the way I choose names, you guys got to know, I just look at a name and I'm like, oh, that looks fun. Let's mess it up. And make that kind of a name. <laughs> so I happen to have the Peter Falk like biography by my bed for no good reason. Because <laughs> I love Columbo and it's just like, you know, <laughs> bless you. <laughs> so this name was inspired by. Clearly, I was like, ah, so should I be a detective? No, I was a shopkeeper. I just wasn't very good at it. And uh, now I'm off on the road uh, to maybe, maybe make some money, pay some debts. Uh, we'll see. <laughs> Petra <laughs> does sound Russian. Dork Lord, you're right. So maybe, uh, <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. That was good. Uh, yeah. Da, da, da. Uh, I'm going to say every $200, Terry has to switch Petra's voice. <laughs> I'm just doing that now. Would I'm super game. You let me know. I'm in. I'm in on the game. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> Next, you're up. Hi. Uh, I'm Nega Oryx. I'm playing uh, Ulta Savis. She is a uh, very, very, very old. Little old lady dragonborn. Uh, I'm multi-classing monk and ranger today. And I'm super excited for you to meet her. She's really, she's really cute. And I love her lots already. Uh, and I'm excited to be here. Yay, premiere. Yay, Trevor Project. Yay, good stuff. Yay. And last but not least, our uh, sweet guest for today, Brennan. Ah, oh my gosh, I'm so excited to be here. Oh, this is so, so exciting. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, uh, couldn't be more looking forward to jumping in and playing. Uh, uh, my character, part of the crew that we have here today, uh, is named Anna Muse. Uh, she is a, uh, a human fey packed warlock. Uh, she's also, uh, it's hard to tell because she changes form all the time, uh, but it seems like the odds are that her actual form is a 10 year old girl, that she's like a kid adventurer. Um, uh, she's uh, most commonly seen with like, uh, uh, like a yellow gingham dress and a little sky blue bandana around her head uh, and some white sandals dirty from treading on the road. And she's got a sort of vine wrapped uh, like kudzu wrapped staff and often like maybe a little fairy around her or some fireflies or seems to be surrounded by uh, mystical little woodland critters at all times. Uh, uh, and uh, the vibe from her is uh, friendly, but maybe more than friendly, just intense, a very intense little magical child. <laughs> Amazing. So uh, with that, with our introductions, we drop into the fiction and we see a set of dusty gray foothills and five travelers standing at the foot of a massive cave. They look bedraggled, beaten, but pushed to great purpose, knowing that this is the place that they've been headed for so long. This is the source of all of that necrotic 
undead energy that's been plaguing the village that scraped together what little money they had to send them here to solve their problem, to keep their land being over from being overrun by the undead. And with that, okay, so we're here, we're about to get started, and I hope you're all ready. We've been waiting for them to do this. I am not convinced they're going to live through it, but you know, if any of you out there want to grant a boon or a bane, you know it's due. Drop a little coin and we'll see how this adventure goes. But they've been doing so well. Maybe one of them will die. Maybe we should kill some of them. Anyway, let's see what they do. And all of you feel a little burst of enervation and proceed into the cave. Is there anything you want to do? You don't know what you're about to face. Uh, it's dark. There's no light anywhere. And the sky outside is gray and overcast. So you're not even getting like any good amount of bleed through from just the mid afternoon sun. I think uh, instinctually Olsus kind of pats around a bit to check for Anna to, you know, very motherly kind of like smooth her back down a bit where her dress might be coming up, almost like fixing the tag on the back when you walk behind someone or whatever. We don't want the big bad to see you looking like this. <laughs> you know what? I'm a caregiver. It's what I do. Uh, and I'm just just making sure Anna's prepared, you know, just just checking in on the little the little wee one. I think your venerable clawed hand finds me um, right sort of back into the left of you where I tend to be uh, just gazing at a little caterpillar on my hand going, so small, where are you trying to get to? Uh, as it like inches down my hand. I think uh, Ulthus just doesn't even say anything, just kind of like lightly gives her a little pat seeing the <laughs> caterpillar and is like, yeah, that that's Anna. Yeah, she's a typical Anna. <laughs> Awesome. Is there uh, anything, uh, yeah, anything else you want to do to try to prepare before you go in? Uh, I think uh, Sunette is going to uh, cast a spell. I think as they walk up to this uh, dark entrance, uh, she pulls down her, her like silken white hood uh, and puts her hand out in front of her and closes her eyes. And then her head tips back a little bit and her eyes open, but... Uh, her pupils have rolled into the back of her skull. So you just see the whites of her eyes uh, and she casts uh, daylight. So that's going to uh, be a 60 foot radius sphere of light that spreads out from a point within range. Uh, and I'll just have the point be to net. Amazing. Uh, yeah. With that sudden burst of light, you are throwing these strange uh, shadows onto the walls and what you couldn't see as you were sort of ambling through the dark in this incredibly long tunnel that's 20 feet high and 20 feet away from you. It's almost perfectly spherical, man-made, something made, deliberately made, and you see carving on the walls. Uh, does anyone here speak deep speech? You walk through and the runes, these words, you feel the menace, the ominous tone as uh, the font gets sort of splayed. It's cut less deliberately into the stone. It gets a little wild and untamed here. And the tunnel itself seems to narrow down, closing in on you all as you see a singular Fuchsia point of light at the far end. And I need uh, Ulthus, can you roll an arcana or perception check for me? Your, your choice. Ooh, yes. That is a, <laughs> that's an 11. That's an 11. <laughs> uh, Within 11, your stomach drops. You, you are so long lived and you have 
a, a mother's instincts about you, even if you were never a, a biological mother yourself. And you feel your arm sort of doing the mom in a car seat protect out in both directions in front of Anna, who is by far the smallest and most, uh, most fragile looking, but also across the rest of the group, something big is back there. Something heavy and dangerous. Something that you know sees you now. Her arms are just out and uh, she kind of raises one up like this and turns to the group and does this and points forward. You need us to be quiet. <laughs> Um, I'd like to cast Pass Without Trace on the party. We, this might be trying to put toothpaste back in the tube if whatever's down there is already, <laughs> already seen us. Um, but I'm going to snap back into it and go, oh, I'm so sorry, everyone. I, I forgot to ask the ground not to hold our tracks. Um, and I'm going to um, uh, lean down, like scoop some of the earth in the tunnel up and just go, Please keep everything you saw here a secret uh, and cast pass without trace uh, on the party. Amazing. You all feel the, the dust around your feet gets a little softer. It starts to sort of curve around and hold your footprints. And as you continue to walk forward, you actually see the dirt sort of smooth out, literally covering your tracks as you go. And uh, it whips up a little bit around Anna as if to say, We've got you covered as you proceed forward. I need everyone to make a stealth check for me as you reach the edge of this tunnel. Uh, and that's going to be plus 10 to everybody's stealth check as well. <gasps> oh, okay. Thank goodness. That's a 24 for me. Ooh. Thank you for that plus 10. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 15. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Thank you for the plus 10. <laughs> I'm right there uh, with you. I got a 14 to, to hang out with that 15 there. Incredible. <laughs> nice. with plus 10. Uh, and I got a 19. <laughs> nice. Ludwig, how you doing? I got a 29. Oh, my oh. God. Oh. I, I love us old folk just carrying the group in stealth here. <laughs> We've had years to practice being quiet. We'll yeah. teach the youngins. Everyone's just very good at ignoring old people. So. Well. <laughs> You're good. <laughs> wow. It's not wrong, though. That's so bad. <laughs> it's not wrong, but it broke my heart. Yeah. Ugh. I'm an adversarial DM. Uh, <laughs> and you reach the edge of this tunnel. And as you are, all are sort of clinging to the walls, you see that central pink light blink slowly and open up. And that, like, bright, hot center of it sweeps back and forth. As if searching, it narrows, and then it recedes back deeper into the cavern, as if the thing that it thought it was looking for, that it had perceived, is letting go for the moment. And as you all push through into this massive cavern of dripping blue stone, you see before you the source of the problem for this village, a death tyrant, beholder in shape, but a skull, and in its empty singular eye, eye socket, burning pink light, and around its head, 10 more lights floating freely through the air. This is a beholder kin that has dreamed itself into a nightmare so bad that it killed itself. It haunts itself and it is a blight on the world. It is fierce and it's dangerous. And you know that this town, this land will see no peace until it's destroyed. So I need you all to roll initiative. Okay. <laughs> it's oh, fine. No. It's fine. Um, I got a 13. Oh my God, who said that? I looked away for two seconds. Me, <laughs> hello, it is I. <laughs> okay, so Ned's got a 13. Uh, I got a nine. Oop, beautiful. Uh, Both of us has a nine. Petra has a 10. 
It says a 10. Uh, how you doing, Ludwig? I got 20. Oh my God, okay. And Anna, Anna? Uh, uh, Anna, Anna's good. Uh, 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 we'll do that that hard uh, American Anna. Um, uh, 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 the uh, Anna got a ten, and either uh, her sprite familiar Fib can go on her turn, or if you want to do separate initiative, he rolled a seven. Okay, Fib can go on his own initiative. I'm into that. All right, uh, so. First up is Ludwig. What do you want to do? Uh, Ludwig basically like shrugs off like his cloak uh, and 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 most of his gear. Pulls out his his He's great naked? sword. No, <laughs> <laughs> he's just not like he just drops all his like his pack and all this stuff that he was carrying. So he's just he's just armor now, or he's just weapons now. And he 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 shrugs it all off. He he looks to this thing and he says. I've been looking for a challenge for a long time. Maybe this is you. Uh, as my bonus action, I would like to cast a challenge uh, or a compel duel. Uh, so uh, it has to make a wisdom save of 14. Okay. Uh, sh I made the save. Okay, then, then, then you are not compelled to fight me. <laughs> but you pop out and command it to fight you, and the Death Tyrant sort of turns on its axis ninety degrees. It has no choice but to grin. There is no musculature over its face, and it kind of drifts towards you. And even though you feel that spell hit and sort of slough off of its form, it nods. A fight then. Good. Yeah. Then I'm gonna just run in and 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 try and smash it. Do a good smash on. Do it. a hit. All right. <laughs> Let's see how this goes. We will. Uh, that's only a twelve to hit. It probably doesn't hit. hit. No, no, it does not. Yep. Yeah, that's that. That's fine. That's fine. Uh, that's fine. I don't think I do. I get a second i forget I, I think i get two attacks at this level i mean yes. double check later but definitely take a second attack now i'm okay. gonna do it <laughs> okay it's an interesting roll uh this is a, a 13 that's definitely gonna not hit it doesn't hit uh so what are you attacking with paint me a word uh, picture of uh ludwig running forward also like a physical description uh yeah ludwig he's 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 very large and very muscular but he's like he's he, not like like workout muscle like man who's worked his entire life like like you know thick thick boy muscly and uh covered in like this like mossy fur uh and a very long like beard of moss with like twigs and in, in, in it uh he has an eye patch over one eye but it doesn't seem to like slow him down or slow his sight for some reason uh and he carries uh like a very just like very heavily used uh just basic great sword that is like nothing magical about it it's just it's seen a lot of use and he takes very good care of it and he he basically just charges in and he just starts like swinging at this thing and and uh like striking but like the the clangs like bounce off the bone and nothing's happening Amazing. Uh so yeah you like hit it across you even chip a little bit of bone and it just is sort of staring at you. That central eye hits you. And then you feel just from the very center of your core, a shaking. And it's as if your cells are trying to scatter apart and it takes all of your time and attention and effort to like hold them together. You are inside this creature's event horizon the cone of its magical radius has ludwig in his many years of adventuring ever fought any other beholderkin before i think he 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 did fight a an, an a beholder once uh a part of a party uh and was uh probably one of the the sole survivors of that encounter with a beholder nice okay so make a history check for me then okay uh da, da, da. Um, excuse Six. me. Six. Excuse me. Uh, 
Terry must change her accent. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. All right. I'll get to that right in a on. second. Uh, with a six, you have a few memories of like the intricacies, intricacies of fighting a beholder, but you remember that central eye and the anti-magic field that it was able to throw out. This feels different. You're not sure how, but you know that you are under some interesting effect right now, though it doesn't seem to be actively damaging you. Mm -hmm. And uh, hold up. As everything freezes around you. Okay. We have an opportunity here. This is, well, the first attack didn't hit. And now I'm feeling a little more confident that this group's going to die. But I think we could do something interesting, all of you. And I hear, uh, Petra, they're interesting. Let's, let's tweak them a little bit. Different accent, maybe. I don't know, something a little more, you know. Uh, heroic for the situation? No, you're right. Something a little more ridiculous. Just add a little levity to the group. Let's see how that goes. And you all come back up. And Terry, I'm so sorry. You have to change right, your Right, sexy, up. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> I regret this immediately. <laughs> it's like an orange and a toothpick. Right. So... <laughs> Altus, can you tell me a little more about your childhood? <laughs> <laughs> I no? guess I will allow you to have a side conversation. Go ahead. This is good. This is good for me. I'm just curious. <laughs> Where you hail from? We're a little busy, Petra. Right, but there's always time for a conversation, uh, getting to no. know a person. No. Not yeah. You've been around a long time. I feel like I should learn from you. Petra, you've had so much time. So much time to ask these questions. Do not well, wait I, until later. My mind is just curious now. Petra, dear, fight first. <laughs> right, right. Do you have any advice for the fight? Should I <laughs> smite? Should I cast a spell? Should I... Smite, uh, I Petra. should make... I should make my choices myself, is what you're saying. Yes, right. Dear. <sighs> and I in the midst of this bizarre dragonborn, dragonborn aside, uh, all of you see <laughs> just a half a second after Ludwig runs in and attempts to hit the Death Tyrant and misses, all of the walls begin to move and roil and tentacles erupt out in every direction. I need uh, everyone but Ludwig to make a dexterity save for me as you jump out of the way as uh, these sort of perturbances come out of the wall five feet. Ooh, you. Are there like, like hey. re-rolls or anything available? Or? Yo, you know what? Cause, no. Uh, no. Oh, I'm sorry. Are you confusing this for Pirates of Salt Bay? Cause no. Well, no, there's not. Abrea's oh. a bully now, confirmed. I'm a cyber Whoa. bully now. Whoa. Okay. <sighs> um, Ooh. I got a 12, which is definitely enough. It's fine. I'm sure it's fine. Uh, just let me know. Uh, raise your hand if you got under a 15. Um, oh, just, just, oh, okay. Me and, me and Vanna. Okay, well, one okay. of you was busy talking and it makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> uh, both of you, I need you to take... Uh, six points of acid damage. Tentacle damage? My um, least favorite kind of damage. It's like a slurpy slap. As you slurpy get slap? <laughs> I'm a wordsmith. <laughs> as you get smacked into the center. I did not come here this morning to be slurpy slapped. I did not. <laughs> it ain't right. You knew what you signed up it for. It ain't right. You knew what you signed up for when you came here. Yeah, here for not. the slurpy there slap. Was, there was the nothing slap. on the list uh, that uh, said you're going to be slurpy slapped. Nothing oh, on there. You didn't get that it. memo? You didn't get No. It, it was, was a it. separate email. Maybe this is my folder. I should save this accent for later. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to need more. 
Uh, so yeah, the walls sort of explode out. And uh, honestly, it looks like the, like a, they're not quite tentacles. They actually look like the, uh, the quills of a sea urchin, but they're able to sort of like waggle in this really off-putting way. It's almost hypnotic as you sort of stare as this entire room sort of turns to a purpose of defending and defeating the death tyrant's enemies. Uh, but with that, the death tyrant's up and is going to perceive at the very least Ludwig. So let's get I beam. Don't let him perceive you, Ludwig. Don't let him do it. <laughs> okay. Uh, Ludwig, I need you to make a wisdom saving throw for me. Okay. I shall do the, such things. All right, not terrible, 18. Oh, you make it. You actually feel a wave of exhaustion hit you, and then it just sort of rolls past you as it sleep ray takes no effect. Um, it looks deep into the hall from where you, like, where you all are sort of pouring in, and it catches Anna's eye. Anna, I need you to make a dexterity saving throw. I'm going to do that right now. My dexterity saving throw is, check this out, a hot four. Oh, what a sexy four you have. <laughs> <laughs> How about that, huh? Oh, oh no. Oh, She's no. She's just a child. Just a just child. A child. And <laughs> uh, what does Anna look like right now? Right now, Anna's in her most usual form of like little, you know, like gingham dress, staff wielding girl with a little fair, a little sprite flittering over her shoulder. Okay. Uh, so she's Link. Very similar to Link. L like, like Southern fantasy, Southern United States fantasy Link would be her vibe. I like mm -hmm. this. Hey, oh. listen. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Excuse me, real yes. quick, real quick. Yes. Um, Terry has to change her accent. <laughs> Time to do the Southern one, <laughs> Terry. Well, thank God I saved something for later. <laughs> it would have been a problem if I had shot all that too early. Oh, well, no. Oh, well, my stars thing. and garters. The thing you all see, y'all, I don't know why I said y'all wrong. Y'all see is... Uh, one of those points of pink light that's sort of circumnavigating the Death Tyrant's head turns and fixes its gaze on Anna and it opens up wide and a tiny like a projectile scene of light goes through the air and hits Anna in the shoulder. Anna, you're going to take 27 points ah! of damage as you are hit with a disintegrate spell. No. Oh, no. 27 points no, of no. damage. Uh, well, I tell you what, uh, in reaction to that, <laughs> I'm going to Misty Escape. I'm going to use my reaction to turn invisible and teleport up to 60 feet to an unoccupied space I can see. Um, is there a space I can see that gives me complete cover from the death? Yeah, we have a bunch of, uh, there's stalactites, uh, up high, shit, I always forget which one is which. Uh, tons of rock formations on the inside of this massive like 100 foot diameter uh, cavern. So yeah, you can get behind and in the uh, in the shadow of this because now you're significantly far enough away from the daylight spell that Sinet's throwing off that uh, you are sort of in the darkness and can lick your wounds, so to speak. Incredible. I will say this looks extremely alarming to my friends because I got hit with a disintegrate and vanished. <laughs> so it's, yeah. it's, it's probably not. But yeah, uh, I missed the escape. Uh, ooh, that's a lot of damage. <laughs> I'm sorry I rolled kind of high. Uh, and then the third one, I need a strength saving throw from Petra. Right. Oops. Right. I got it. <laughs> I'm rolling real good for this show today. I'm just going to let you know I have done nothing but good rolls today. Uh-huh. Like rolls with butter. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. And I've got um, 
That's a, oh, not, that's actually not that bad. My modifier makes it okay. That's a 17. A 17 just makes it as you feel uh, one, another one of those pink eyes turns its gaze on you, Petra, and they feel themselves kind of getting lifted up off of their feet uh, as if they were about to be flung in a direction and you kind of just sort of flex and shrug off the effect. Do you ever feel like somebody's watching you real close? Okay, just me. <laughs> okay, just me talking to the wind. It's fine. Sunette. In the fight, can't answer yet. <laughs> Sunette, you're up. Kind I'm of so sorry, Petra. Right now. Petra, I would, I would talk with you more if I wasn't on death's door and hiding from the monster. Oh, right. Okay, <laughs> sorry. Bye. Uh, my turn? Yep. Your turn. What do they want to do? Um, I think, uh, Sinet is going to, under her breath, um, just say, uh, two can play at this game. Uh, and then she's going to cast Evard's Black Tentacles, uh, in a 20 foot square, uh, just beyond, uh, the big bad so that it's not, uh, also in capturing Ludwig. Not a problem. Awesome. Uh, do I have to do a roll about it? I don't want to. Mm, it won't really kick up until their turn again, because okay. then they'll have to like roll a deck save to see if they are affected by it or not. Okay, sounds good. Uh, do you want to do anything else with your bonus action or movement? Mm, I think I'll, I think I will go behind one of the stalagmites. Sweet. So you like rock in and uh, get some cover as you move into the space proper. Okay. Uh, nice. Next up is Petra. Oh, shoot. Okay. <laughs> That's you. <laughs> I realized that. I That's was like, you. Oh. I just was reading the, the, the we're slurpy sloppy in this in this chat. And I was like, yeah, I'm <laughs> slurpy <laughs> slap. slapping for sure. <laughs> slurpy slap. All right. Great. So uh, thanks for the, the, uh, Advice from Ultus. I'm gonna use my mace of smiting. Oh, you're gonna <laughs> run up, just run up and do a hit on its face meat. There's no meat. Face bone. Uh, 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 yeah, I guess the whatever is I can contact and and try to get it away from and not anyway. Yeah. Okay. So I'm rolling, 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 rolling. Okay. Oh, cool, cool, cool. That was a natural one. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna win. I have rolled the worst. I have. I mean, I've rolled bad in, in our Salt Bay games. So this is I'm literally gonna the win worst today. I this is the day. Rolled. Hey Dom, if I kill them all, can I go home early? <laughs> uh, no. Uh, Bria, you are home. <laughs> and we're also raising money for charities, so let's, like, stay and hang out and raise the monies. Uh, Bria, <laughs> uh, Bria yeah. you may be the game master, but I am the stream master. Ooh. <laughs> that was spooky. I yeah. liked it. I liked it. The Death Tyrant sounds like Dom now. Mm. Okay, uh, so you swing forward uh you are of trying to avoid some of these like tentacles and keeping ludwig out, out of the way and you actually see the the everts black tentacles that sanette uh conjured beginning to grow up behind this death tyrant this massive skull of a face and you are just a little overstimulated you swing in a mist you want to attack again yeah i get a second attack i'm gonna try one more time because dear god um, I'm gonna roll with a different dicey though. You're in jail, okay? <laughs> Ooh, that was. Anyway, I thought it was gonna be hot, and it was. It wasn't. It was not. It was mm. cold, cold, cold. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's on the floor. That's... Oh, goodbye. <laughs> goodbye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> this is going great. This is good for me. All right. Uh, all right. Has 17 work this time? Uh, a 17 is going to just hit. Great. That's what I needed. That's what I, all I ever wanted. Mm -hmm. All I ever needed. 
Um, and that's uh, seven uh, points of damage. Sweet. So as you come forward and swing, uh, why don't you go ahead and give me a physical description of what we all see as Petra uh, lands the first big blow on this death tyrant? Um, well, I... Uh, anyway, use my mace. I'm swinging, I'm swinging. And I, I was a little discombobulated from right before because I was knocked a little over and like couldn't quite make it. So I was able to dust myself up, get myself up and start all over again. And I was proud of myself. So I swung, swung, swung and a smacky on a little bone. And it was like crack. And you heard a big sound crack as it Beautiful. happened. And right as that crack sound sort of resolves through the hall, everything freezes once more. Okay, here's the thing. Uh, I had to give them a little bit of a boon here because I think we're going to kill them. Uh, so I, I went ahead and made the, the, the bad guy, the teeth and the eyes. It's a little easier to hit, but I don't want this to be too easy. So why don't you all let me know if, I don't know, maybe we do like a little bane, like a little make it a little harder, make a little something bad happen. Or... If you're just very into the idea of letting these heroes win, uh, let me know. And we'll, we'll give them a, another little gimme, something good. You know, heroes triumphing overall. You let me know what you want with this narrative, but I'm having a great time. Thank you. I hope you're all enjoying this a bunch. Okay. Uh, bye. And everything kind of comes up to speed again. Uh, Anna, you're up. I am going to jump right in here. Um, uh, number one, uh, is there anything? And listen, hey, I know when it's a reach, so we're gonna dis <laughs> we're gonna disclaim right away. Of the stalactites above the death tyrant's head, is there anything that looks perhaps structurally weak, or that <laughs> perhaps? the manner in which it is secured to the roof of the cavern is particularly uh, uh, un unwieldy or unsturdy. Uh, you know what? Actually, as your eyes track up, you see that everything is like firmly secured there. And then as you, your eyes sweep past a stalactite you saw before, all of a sudden it seems to like have narrowed out at the edge. And uh, it seems as though it was sawed off around all the sides and looks a little more precarious than when you glanced at it half a second earlier. Incredible. Okay, here's my turn. I'm going to cast uh, Summon Fae um, uh, to, to summon a powerful fairy warrior um, uh, to, to my aid. Uh, and I can roll initiative for that uh, fairy warrior as well. Um, that's gonna join us here. Um, uh, the initiative for that fairy warrior is going to be uh, an 11. Ooh, uh, great. The absolute farthest away from my initiative <laughs> it could be. Uh, so You're not wrong. <laughs> I'm going to summon a fairy uh, and I'm going to go, hi, I need you to fight for us. We're in a lot of trouble. And then uh, I'm going to bonus action telekinetic shove that stalactite up above the death tyrant's head. Um, normally, that that's a bonus action, um, uh, but normally that's a DC sixteen strength save. Mm -hmm. But I, uh, but if you want me to make a roll for that as well, because yeah, I let's make it an attack roll on your end, and just see how you do. Heck yeah, let's go for it. Here we go. Attack roll coming up. These electronic dice have not been helping me. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> and that's a natural three for a 13. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you see, like, you're able to give it a shove, and it kind of, it makes a loud crack sound, and you see uh, where it's beginning to tear away, but it doesn't quite leave yet. Copy that. Good to know. Doesn't drop down. Um, I'm going to, okay. I understand that normally the DM has to like decide what the fake creature is going to be. And it becomes a whole, you can just pick cause you're new here and I like you. <gasps> so just take whatever you want for your summon fae and we'll deal with that. Oh my God. We're special Incredible. and my favorite. Don't tell the others. Oh. We can hear you. Oh no. <laughs> Brennan, what's it like to be loved by a Bria? 
Is it as glorious <laughs> as I always imagined it would be? Uh, normally, I would try to spare your feelings here. It's incredible. It's really incredible. <laughs> oh, um, it's I really... like literally like dreams. Dreams. <laughs> Better than you true. can imagine. Oh. <laughs> basking in the glow. Just basking in the glow. Oh. Uh, okay, Olfus, you're up. Go ahead and make a perception check for me. Yes, ma'am. Yay. Uh, boo -boo 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 -boo. Mm, that is a, ooh, an 18. Oh, yeah. With an 18, you've watched all of this happen, but you also just have that, uh, your, your eyes on Anna behind, uh, under her little rock cover. You actually saw her reach her hand up and shove that stalactite up high, and you see that it is hanging ever so precariously. It is one good hit from dropping down, if you want to do anything with that. And you are up. Oh, okay. So, whew, um, that is a good piece of information to have. I'm trying to think of the most useful way that I can maximize my turn and knock that down and also do the other stuff I was going to do. Um, well, poodles. I wasn't prepared for that information. How far away am I from it? Uh, it's probably like 40 feet upward. Uh, at an angle, I'm not going to do the Pythagorean theorem here. Let's just say a solid of like 50 feet away from where you're standing. I like it when you do geometry, though. It's so hard. Yeah. <laughs> it's a 30, 40, 50 right triangle. It's fine. Okay. Ooh, okay. I don't know if this is the most efficient way to do it, but seeing, seeing, connecting the dots and seeing what Anna's trying to accomplish, um, hear me out. Here's what I want to do. You tell me if it makes sense. Mm. I would like to first and foremost cast Hunter's Mark onto like the creature that we are attacking in the first place. Absolutely done. You do the thing. Beautiful. Okay. That being said, now I would like to use my breath weapon because Ulfus is feeling a little feisty today. Yes. And uh, I would like to, I guess, I was initially planning on attacking the creature, but I guess aiming it to, to, uh, we're Rube Goldberging it. And I'm going to hit the stalactite, stalagmite, stalactite? Stalactite. Stalactite. So There's no way to know. There is. There's, <laughs> there, there actually it's is. Hanging but it, it's hanging tight to the ceiling. ceiling. I, Stalactite. I can, no, I think it's hanging with all its might. No. Oh, no Eric, no, that's, that's, that's like confusing. That's that poison no. my brain. Eric, that is some, that is some <laughs> dislogic is what it is. <laughs> Shut your mouth. I can't, you can't have me come on as a guest the oh, for the first down. time they and the know the exact down. little, yeah, the, know yep. the exact little thing and be that pedantic nerd that's like, do oh, it. actually, <laughs> you have um, to do it. That's why you're stalac here. <laughs> stalac C for ceiling, stalag G for ground. Stalagmites are on the ground, stalactites are on the ceiling. Um, uh, Here's my mind. Uh, uh, yeah, it's that's uh, it's, uh, it's not for me. <laughs> nerd. Oh, nerd. <laughs> I'm leaving this game a changed human today. I we have already something. learned yeah. so much. We had geometry. We like got like what is this biology? What are we doing? What are we doing? We're learning on this Excuse channel me. today. Excuse me. Um, the chat has wished for a boon. <gasps> Understood. And Ulfus, as you are sort of looking between uh, the stalactite and, <laughs> now I know, <laughs> the stalactite and the death tyrant trying to figure out what way, uh, what's the best use of your breath weapon here? You have a scent of roses and sweet rot that sort of fills your nostrils and you feel enervated. Uh, you feel like you drop into bullet time and you have enough bandwidth, enough moment, space, and breath to do both. <gasps> so go ahead and attack both things for me, please. Oh, that's so cool. Okay, cool. 
This is my first time ever uh, playing a Dragonborn character, so it's my first time using this ability. I'm very excited. Uh, so, uh, I believe your DC is going to be 10 for okay. this one. And I'm... Okay, all right. We got this chat. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Okay, um, so uh, the, the, the rock does not... Make it, obviously. Yeah. And uh, you know what? Neither does the death tyrant. Oh, snap. Okay. So we have 46 then for that one for damage. 46 or 4d6? 4d6. Okay, cool. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm rolling 4d6. Yeah. Uh, which is a total of 16 damage. Beautiful. Yeah. Uh so you, you're, do you want to, here, you describe what that looks like for me. Give me <gasps> Ulthus just stepping into the room and going off. Yeah. So she feels particularly protective of Anna and at like the slightest indication that Anna has been uh, essentially like wounded beyond a scratch, like mm. anything more than a paper cut. And she's just like, oh, you messed with the wrong dragonborn. And I think that's where she's kind of like summoning this uh, very like maternal instinct strengthy of like, first off, no, back off. I'm going to lightning the heck out of you. Um, but also getting that that renewed second wind from the, the, the interesting uh, smell that you described, uh, being able to just kind of, she normally walks with a bit of a hunch, like she's a little bit hunched over. And she just straightens herself up ever so slightly when she does it and kind of like cranes her neck in a really beautiful way and elongates herself. And you see the stance transform from like this timid little old lady to a, a really, really powerful and, and formidable woman uh, as she just like mom rages lightning <laughs> out. <laughs> Amazing. Don't forget to add uh, add your hunter's mark damage to the hit. Oh, I already did. That was okay. the fourth D6. Yeah. Perfect. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and that big stalactite drops down. Anna, you know what? Make a... Give me a spell attack roll. Dice. <laughs> I love it. It's okay. making me dance. I like, yeah, right. yes. It's like, do those click clacks. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> magic, magic, math rocks. I'm going to wave. I'm going to wave over at Ulthus and say, thanks, Ulthus. <gasps> I'm hiding. And then stay behind the. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Give me that spell attack roll. I just want to see something here. Anna. Mm. Uh, oh, sorry. Sorry. Read that one more time. <laughs> Spell attack roll. Spell attack the roll. stalactite comes down. Gotcha. Um, hold on one second. Uh, 26 from me. Holy shit. Okay. That wasn't what I expected. I was like, something reasonable. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, as, your, as your sort of favored stalactite gets dislodged, and begins to come down, you shoved it, and you have this sort of sense of a uh, an extra limb that still has its hand on it. And you can control it down if you want. Um, I would like to control it on its way down, if presented with that opportunity. Uh, and I'd like to move it right towards the big old center eye of the death tyrant, uh, if at all possible, on the way down. Perfect. Uh, yeah, it comes crashing down. I'm going to make a dexterity save. Uh, go ahead and roll. Hmm. Give me 2d10 for the 2D10 damage. 2d10 is very doable. Um, that's Ooh, that's going to be 11. Perfect. And it takes another 11 points of damage as it looks up 
with its many sort of halo eyes and then its central eye. Uh, Ludwig, you feel pressure lift off of you as its attention is suddenly moved upward and it lunges out of the way, but still like half of its mandible just gets rocked by this big, like sharp piece of uh, stone. And Anna, you hear in your ear, oh yes, very, very good, but love it. And you actually hear the sound of applause in your ears and cheering as this thing lunges away and takes a little bit of damage. All right. Uh I think Anna pumps or I pump my little fists in the air. Yeah. Um. Uh. What? Sorry. What was your What was your little guy's? What's Tina Fey's name again? Uh, Tina, Tina Fey. <laughs> Tina Fey. Uh. Uh. uh Fib. My familiar's Fib. name is Fib. Fib. There you That's go. The cutest shit I've ever heard. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Fib, you're up. Um, Fib, uh, uh, cool. Fib, I'll, I'll, given that I'm playing Fib in combat, Fib goes, "Oh, you motherfucker!" What? And rushes towards. <laughs> um, what and, a twist! <laughs> twist! Did not um, see that coming. Uh, it's and, uh, <laughs> oh, you gonna go after my master, uh, little Anna? Over you forget it. Um, and it's like. He, I think Fib has like little war. He's he's only like that big. He's like two inches tall, but he's got like little war paint, dragonfly wings, little shirt made out of a leaf uh, and a short bow. But he takes out his little like twig long sword uh, and is going to fly and just directly engage in melee combat with um, the death tyrant. Um, but uh, uh, is actually just taking the help action for Anna's next turn. Nice. Uh yeah, as Fib comes out, you can all see this like tiny two inch badass, like just knocking up against a massive death tyrant as all 10 of the death tyrant's eyes sort of like shoot down on this little thing. And you can feel the massive question mark over its head. Uh, Anna, you hear riotous applause, cheering, and the chant of Fib, Fib, Fib in your ears. It's, it's a little <laughs> deafening at this point. And uh, we come back up to the top of our order. Ludwig, you're up. Okay. I, uh, having seen the, the stalactite hit, and then now with the distraction of Fib, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to rage uh, and, uh, and, and, and strike at this thing. Yeah. Let's go. S Strike twice. Uh, Hopefully, one of them is Fib giving the help action for Anna specifically, or for anyone. Uh, well, that's it. You know, I actually don't know the rules for that. But actually, if if we can, because you know, Fib Fib has a lot of heart and not a lot of hit points. So let's go ahead and give the help action. To Ludwig, <laughs> Fib might not be around for that. Long. <laughs> All right, we will see how long Fib lasts. This feels good. Great. All right, what does help give? Advantage on your attack. Okay, that's good. I like that. Uh, so then the first attack will be a 19. A 19 hits. Okay. Uh, so uh, let's make sure I got this because my first hit's different than... Okay, so uh, so when he, he swings his, his, his great sword, what you notice is that there's like a sort of like purple sheen to it after the first strike, like for this first strike, as it like smashes and hits with uh, it, I do um, seven points of regular uh, slashing damage and then five points of, of, uh, of uh, radiant damage. Ooh. With my first hit. Nice. Beautiful. Incredible. Uh, it's sort of like it, you finish taking off like half of this thing's jaw and it sort of opens up to the side, just dropping down uh, the teeth float in midair, even where the bone has fallen away so it can still speak and it looks at you. You feel that main eye ray come back down onto you. And it goes, I will kill you and raise you as one of my own. Many have tried. The gods won't let me die. There are I'm no gonna, gods here. I'm going to strike again. Uh, and this one was a natural 20. Yeah! <laughs> so that'll... <laughs> Let's, let's roll a whole bunch of dice for that. Uh, this is going to be uh, 20 damage as he like Woo! circles the great sword down and just like slams it down as, with like his full force. 
Amazing. Yeah, you are cleaving bone away. And as it scatters, it just sort of freezes out in its kinetic trajectory and is just sort of hovering around. You're building like this weird sort of debris, like a Saturn of uh, Saturn's rings of bone beginning to like halo around it. Okay. Is there anything else you want to do? Uh, My sweet boy who has done nothing wrong. Let me just say. That's good. I'm good. Okay, fine. Uh, yeah. So uh, it is up now. So Sunette. Dexterity talk- saving throw. Okay, okay. To to avoid my tentacles. Is there anything I can do because it floats? Because I rolled really bad and I don't want. They're tentacles. To They're going up there. They're grabbing. This ain't no <laughs> like little vine it. nonsense. This is like, come here. I don't like it. Come here. I failed with a three. You really did. Uh, let me roll 3d6 bludgeoning damage. You could not. I will. I don't like this. Ooh, and I rolled well. 15 bludgeoning oh. damage. Uh, yeah, these. Do you want to describe what it looks like? Um, so I think it's it almost mimics what uh, what had come out of the walls like previously, but they're like thicker and uh, more animalistic than what we saw before and and they uh spiral up like a kraken and just start weaving around each other and wrapping around uh the dust skull i've decided it's the pokemon dust skull just very large um and uh (laughs) (laughs) and uh bringing it down and pulling it not to the ground completely but uh restraining it uh and you can see the the like suction cups are just like completely flattened uh, against its uh, the bone of its face. Yeah. Uh, Ludwig, you're still in its like ray, but you just sort of see this massive thing crash down in front of you. Those tentacles are reaching into like interbone spaces, like into the cracks in the skull, like reaching into the eye socket around the like glowing eye and just sort of pull it down to earth. It takes a bunch of damage and makes a sound and begins to sort of howl something that none of you understand because you don't speak deep speech. But uh, is quite pissed, just like I am, that my sweet boy is getting hurt a bunch. I don't enjoy this. So you, they can get out, but they would have to use a full action and succeed on a strength or dex save to get out. So Love that. Okay, perfect. Um, so for one of its legendary actions, it's going to open its eye ray on you. And I need on you who? on you, Sunette. I'm and behind it. I'm behind a stalagmite. Yeah, this is a, it sees you. <laughs> uh, one of its, uh, there's an eye that actually just, none of these little pink lights are tethered to it, but you just see behind a stalactite. My stalagmite, I'm good at this, I can do this. Uh, A little pink eye, a point of light opens up and you are perceived. Please make a constitution saving throw. Again, I did not come here to be perceived, Abria. I know, I'm sorry. First I get sloppy slapped and now I'm perceived. (laughs) This is the worst day of my life. What do you need me to do? Uh, Go ahead and make a constitution save. You want to be the 70. Ooh, I'm I'm pretty good with that. So let's go. Um, That's a dirty 20. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you feel this sort of like sickly energy wash over you, and though and you able- like it, and you like it, I don't like that. It makes you have to pee a little bit. I'm just gonna change what it does because I don't enjoy this. <laughs> uh, no, you're gonna go ahead. Like though you're able to shrug off most of the effects and sort of slide around the stalagmite uh, to get out of its. Uh, view you still take uh 19 points of necrotic damage ha i'm i'm resistant all right yeah have it have it and round Ooh. down hey got it beautiful perfect i slurp should... it up like it's a goddamn slushy i don't like this at all but i do like them <laughs> this character is yucky and i'm very into it she's pretty i told you she's so cute Okay, um, my bad boy is going to go properly now. Uh, it can, like, at this new angle, 
who, okay, Anna's hiding, Sinet's hiding, Ulfus, Ludwig, and Petra, you're all out in the open, yes? Because you're doing hits. So uh, it's going to perceive the three of you. Um, you know what? I'm going to make you guys roll this. Each one of you roll a d10 to see which eye is going to look at you. Let's start with Ulf, Ulfus. Uh, I got a nine. All right. Uh, with a nine, one of the eyes opens up, and I need you to make a dexterity saving throw. Ooh, okay. Um, I was today years old when I learned you could roll in D and D Beyond. By the way, you so. can roll oh. in D and D Beyond, and everyone can see your rolls now I, in case you forget it. Because I, I, I saw that I saw them popping up for Eric, and I was like, "Wow, he's doing things that I don't understand," and I like it. Me- yeah, well, that's the sexiest life. part of D&D Beyond. What have you been doing with your lives? <laughs> out I've been over here playing there. with my, my tray and like throwing rocks around, you know, because I like to touch the thing. Jerry, please that's don't tell cool. the entire chat about you playing with your tray, okay? Okay. How I sit there like this. What'd you get? Please tell me. 19. Oh, good. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Terry, get, get your tray off your face. This is this it's, is getting out of control. It's so soft, though. <laughs> With a 19, uh, the disintegration ray that you saw, that little projectile point of light that you saw hit Anna before she disappeared, though she had just gone invisible and poofed somewhere else, uh, actually hits you in the knee. You're going to take 20 points of force damage. All right. Uh Wait, can I just confirm something real quick? Is yes. that just is that a ranged weapon attack that just happened to me or no? It's technically a spell attack. Oh, poodles. Okay. Hold on. And all of you freeze for a second. Okay. Uh, they're doing really well. Do we want to let Ulthus have this? She's so cute. I just kind of want to give this to her. Like, we can make it count as a weapon thing, right? Like, what? Are we going to, like, kill an old lady that's looking out for that weird little kid? I don't like where any of that's going. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I agree. This is fine. We're going to do this. It's cute, and I love it. And you all are brought back to your moment. Ulfus, yes, it is a ranged attack. Okay, awesome. Because I have a reaction I can use then. Um, so the damage I take from the attack is reduced by 1d10 plus 8. Perfect. Okay. So let me roll oh, high. d10. That's a 6. Okay, so uh, I take 14 less. Only 6 points. Of 6 force points. Damage. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, don't thank me. As Anna, once again, you hear just at the very back of your mind... Chants and cheers and Ulfus's name. And it feels like it's just behind you. And if you turned, if you caught it at the right angle with your peripheral vision, you could see whoever is watching through your eyes and seeing what you're seeing right now. Anyway, uh, Ludwig, what'd you get? I rolled a one on my D10. Perfect. Uh, With a one, can you please make a wisdom saving throw for me? I can. Uh, I got a 15. Uh, Is that a success or a failure? It is a failure. Okay. And then I get to to re-roll one failed save while I'm raging. Beautiful. I must use this roll. And that that one's a natural 20. (laughs) (laughs) Let's go. (laughs) All right. Okay. Uh, yeah, you, you feel a warmth from the center of your stomach, like drinking a good, strong brandy and it kind of spreads out and part of you, you feel yourself soften to the death tyrant. You almost begin to feel bad. And then something in the back of your mind shouts, no, and you feel it shatter away and you are left cold, but no longer uh, under the beginnings of a charm spell. I don't, can I even be charmed when I'm raging? I don't know. I'm not looking at your character sheet anymore. (laughs) You're big kids. You can do this on your own. Petra. (laughs) 
<laughs> what did Real they quick, roll on the D10? It's a dance party because we've got 100 subs, so we're gifting 100 uh, bucks to the Trevor Project. Thank you, Ooh, chat, for doing that. Thank you. Uh, but also, uh, Terry, you need to change your accent one more time. Yeah! Oh, What's it going to be this time? Let's God. catch her now. Oh, man. Okay, okay, okay. Someone said they wanted Ireland, but it's so close to Scottish, and I don't know the difference in my brain. I don't um, either. Let's, I think it's lilting. A little lilting, like we're uh, on the countryside. Um, no. right, I feel like I have to go lighter. <laughs> yeah, do I an impression to, of it's Addy. Got, it's got to be the Just 30s. Yeah. Addy. <laughs> all, I, all I can do in Irish is the 30s and the 40s. And it's uh, <laughs> a long time ago. You got to travel. And uh, I like, the, as they say, Thursdays and Fridays. <laughs> <laughs> Thursday. All right. <laughs> Thursday, getting your Thursday we play. Um, I got a nine. Okay. Uh, with a nine, I need you to make a dexterity saving throw. Actually, no. Uh, you know what? No, it's okay. Uh, no, it's still a dex save. Make a dexterity save. Okay. Please roll well. <gasps> Natural 20! I didn't Let's mean go. that well. Oh my God. <laughs> and what I'm... I meant to say was do what I want exactly. Sweet. Yeah. What I wanted was... Not you what I wanted got. a twenty. Da 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 Yes. While you are sorting your accent out, <laughs> you see the the eye on the lower left of the death tyrant open, and a single bead of jet black water shoots out from it, and it touches your heart and passes through you, and you feel yourself go cold, and you are frozen, locked in a moment in the balance between life and death. And then it passes through you. You take no damage, but had you failed the roll, you would have taken so much damage. All of it. So good job. And I'm... Anna, you just hear a loud voice, mm -hmm. annoyed. In my in my head? Yeah. I um I think I'm distracted and looking at Petra and I go, ooh, you got beholder juice on you. Um <laughs> and uh um and I'll tap into the voice in my head, uh, if I can. Is this the lady above? <clears throat> oh, she's talking to why? Yeah, no, I got it. Everyone shh, shh, shh. yeah. Uh uh, yeah, yes. Yes, it is. Hello. Hi, how are you, my Hi. child? Thank you for the spells. Is everything all right where you are? Oh, oh, yes. Why are you asking? What? I'm so sorry. You started speaking in my head. It sounds like I'm not supposed to hear this right now. What are you, <clears throat> what are you hearing? Little girl? Um, I'm going to look at the Fae I've just summoned here in front of me, um, uh, whose name is Ruse, by the way. Ooh. Uh, um, uh, and she is a, in, in my head, she is like a Nixie, like forest bear, like long pointed ears, but like big straw hat, flickering rapier, and then like, farm girl shirt and Daisy Dukes on like little Southern fairy Sprite. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, and I look up at Ruse and say, um, can you hear these voices too? And you see Ruse go to speak and then suddenly freezes. Um, I'm going to speak to the voice in my head very quickly. And I'm not sure what's happening with time in the battle right now, but I think I'm putting together that this is nothing to do with the death tyrant. And I'm going to look and 
go. And I also am, am naturally telepathic. So I just am speaking to them in my own head. And yeah. Go, Are you stopping my summon from talking? What, what is it you're hiding from me? Where is the lady above? Make a perception check for me. I'm going to do that right now. <laughs> That's going to be an entire eight. <laughs> uh, with that, you are you look around and you see that everyone else is frozen, but both Ruse, both Ruse and Fib and yourself, if you look down at your own hands, still like have that like full color, though everything else is sort of grayed out as if like the focus is a bit too much for holding all of these things right now. I'm gonna move my hand in space to pass it in front of those things that are rendered like in grayscale in front of me. Uh, it feels like everything is there and vital and real, but it, you have like a pins and needles to you right now that like all of the focus is on you. And the more you stretch that out in a way, you're losing your connection to what's going on in your mind. Uh, the, the lady above gets a little quieter. You don't hear the other voices, the cheers, the boos, the shocked gasps now. Now check this out. My telepathic feet, which lets me speak into people's heads, also lets me once per long rest use detect thoughts. I know that theoretically I would still be in initiative order, but given that we're in this weird stop down state, I'm going to attempt to cast detect thoughts on the voices in my own head. Yeah, uh, you get a bunch of stuff for free. And the thing that you, I'll give you is, have you ever had a conception of what the lady above looks like? I think I change what I look like so often that I have recently begun to doubt that I've ever seen her true form. Yeah. It flutters in the same way that you do. And it even freezes for a second on uh, a woman with dark skin, glasses with long braids that's <laughs> looking around, very perplexed uh, in the conductor seat that looks like uh, at the bottom of a stage. And there are crowds of people behind them and all of that suddenly like flutters away. And this person keeps cycling until it lands on you. And it just looks like you're staring at yourself. Um, I'm going to do my best to move towards that. And I think I want to move towards that, not in the way that I walk in terrestrial space, but almost like I'm trying to do my misty escape again. It's like, I want to be, I, I don't want to walk there. I just want to be there. Yeah. Uh, you move forward. Your intention is set. And the other you sort of staggers back a step. Okay. This is why we don't allow what? Hi, what can I do for you? Uh -huh. You're uh, here. Shit. Am I in physical space here? Am I? <laughs> yeah. Can, can I perceive myself existing in this yes. space. Um, do I see the the figure that I believe to that looks like me? The figure that is. Um, I'm going to change my form to look like a regal fairy queen. Um, and see what happens to the form of the other me that I perceive in this space. The moment you reach into your mind and build the most beautiful fae creature with long sweeping robes made of like moonlight and unicorn hair, uh, iridescent and purple and draped and sort of flowing away from you as if like untethered to gravity. This grandiose design pops into your mind and you watch for half a second as uh, the Anna standing in front of you leans in and takes this big sigh of relief as she takes that form too and then catches herself. 
oh, no, 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 no. And you see her like looking down, trying to change herself into something else, but she can't. She's stuck in it. Staring at you. Uh, I think, <laughs> ooh, let me know. Is this too scary? Um, I'm going to sprint towards the other fairy queen that I see. Um, uh, with some physical effort of going and grabbing this other fairy queen. And I think Anna has a desire that she would be scared to express out loud, but I think she's going to try to become this other version of her that she can see. I think she's like, I think I want to be like, oh, that's if that's me and I'm me, Two me's seems like too many. Let's get this down to one me. And uh, I sprint towards that and try to like leap into or to to like yeah become the one thing. Uh, let's treat this like a grapple. So go ahead and make an athletics check for me, and I'll oppose it with a very bad uh, strength saving throw. So um, roll better than an eleven. Um, awesome. Um, can I, as a bonus action, use my telekinetic shove uh, to get to try to get this thing prone and get advantage on this roll? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, okay. uh, then I will burn that 11 on the shove and she gets knocked down and is sort of on the ground reaching up towards you. Awesome. Okay, I'm going to roll. I have bad athletics, but I'm rolling with advantage. Yep. And now, yeah, now you have to beat a 13 since I rolled again. I don't beat a 13. Uh, so you like tackle out towards this and she grabs you by the throat. No. Why are you here? Why? How? What are we doing? And sort of unbidden your, your desire to jump into, become part of this as she contemplates herself, this thing is that is external to you, she looks back at the hand that's holding you, that's sinking its long nails into you, and she's dissolving into you. You can keep pushing forward. She can't stop you. I keep pushing forward. No, 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 no. This is... And before she can finish articulating it, you sort of sink into this form and you are a layer deeper. You are Anna, but you also realize that you are looking at yourself as this small child and you see layers upon layers of illusions. And the deepest illusion is that little girl and you are deeply dissociating from any sense of your physical form. You are both staring at yourself and yourself in this moment. And the voice that you hear in your head and the voice that the lady above is speaking to you with are one and the same. All right. Fine. You're here. We're here. What do you need? Um, to what degree in this moment am I, am I both people? Am I still more the me that came out of that fight with the death tyrant or am I fully both people right now? Uh, this is a like cool conceptual to say, but I don't know if it's a helpful question in that you and I are two different people, but you are both in this moment. You are asking and answering your own questions. Okay. Um, so <laughs> I am going to, and we can do as much of this IRL as you want, or I could just sit here and have a conversation with myself. <laughs> <laughs> but I am uh, ign like, is that like MC person from, from the stage still here in the space with us? Or was this person, that same figure who was like conducting the audience here. That MC you actually see in the sort of like countless illusions that you can grab to 
that MC is one of those illusions, but you see that where the other ones are sort of like frozen in position, uh, a lot like uh, the West world where you see like a bunch of just like inert bodies, the MC is still acting, still orchestrating, still responding to a crowd behind her that no one else can see. Um, I'm going to ignore everything that is not the lady above and Anna, both of which are now partially myself I, in this bizarre, this this freaky, weird, fey, supernal realm, uh, <laughs> Jim, Jim Jam going on. Jim Jam is the technical word. Yeah, um, it is. We got ourselves a Jim Jam, folks. Um, and I'm going to, um, the main thing I think I'm going to do is uh, interrogate the parts of myself that were outside of the little girl asking, why did you make me? Why did you think this was fun? Why did you want to see me and my friends in danger? Um, and I'm going to start getting answers back. Um, and I think any, if there's any resistance or voice coming back to me, that's like, you're not real, I made you. The response I'm going to say is, you're not real either. We all make ourselves. Yeah. Uh, you're having this sort of thing echoing back in your head. And uh, eventually the MC sort of breaks from this loop where you're asking questions of yourself and you sort of know the answer already. And just sort of pulls away out of this moment and says, well... I don't know how this is happening and we don't have time for philosophy. So you're fake. Do we just bring you back now? You can just return. We'll figure out what's happening. You want to come home, right? We'll bring you all back. Um, or do you want to finish the fight? Um, I'm, this isn't my home anymore. You made something you shouldn't have. It's not polite to make people for fun. And I don't want to come home because you've made someone for which this place is not home. No, I'm going to be taking the rest of me back to my friends. And I want to fall back into the fight reality and oh. drag the rest of me I found here back into the fight with me. Yeah. Uh, you feel that MC reach towards you and miss and hisses and swears in a language. Do you speak? Does Anna speak Sylvan? Yes, she does. Yeah, uh, you hear her say uh, some very adult words that we won't repeat here because this is a Christian Minecraft channel. Uh, <laughs> and you are sort of dropped back in real time in the midst of this fight. And uh, you still look like that begingamed little girl, but your skin at the very tips, the edges of your phalanges goes sort of dark purple and iridescent. You've taken some of that back with you and you can shut away the voice now because it is screaming for you to return and seeking out and lashing out and trying to figure out what to do. You have set off alarms. Um, whatever I can do to completely seal off communication, I want to do. And I would also like to potentially do that for my friends here as well. Nice. Uh, make an Arcana check for me. You got it. <sighs> That's a five. I have not rolled above a seven <laughs> thus far. It's okay. Uh, with a five, the moment you sort of reach out with your mind to try to extend that same grace to the rest of the group, something else changes and you open up the pathway for feedback. And I need all of you to make wisdom saving throws with disadvantage. 
as you are looped into a frequency that you were not supposed to be a part of. I got a 23. Woo! Shit. Woo! Nice. What is it? What's the wisdom, wisdom save? save? Wisdom. Thank you. Uh, 18. That's a pass. Ludwig. 12. <laughs> Not quite a pass. And Petra. You said with disadvantage, right? Mm -hmm. Just making sure. Okay. Because the other one was 20, but this one um, was, was a 14. Okay. Uh, you actually made it. Ludwig, you're the only one. I need you to take seven points of psychic damage as okay. all of you are hearing the sounds of it. It's very much like behind the scenes, like, okay, well, what do you want me to do? I, I think she knows. I, I mean, we could just pull the plug on this. We can just wrap this, shut it down. Uh, and you hear cheering and jeers, a very, uh, a very excited audience that's yelling like, let them play or just like, shut it down. A couple people in the corner, you hear them murmuring about where they're going to go eat after this. It is <laughs> open frequency. And all of you can hear it. But you're still in initiative. And it's the death tyrant isn't dead yet. Uh, Sunette, you're up. So I, I can hear all of that. Yeah. I, I think maybe Sinet, uh auto assumption is that the death tyrant is imposing this as some sort of like psychological warfare. <laughs> uh, so I think uh, she's going to continue to target them. Um, and Hmm. And okay. <laughs> this is a lot. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, no, you're good. Um, um, I think she's gonna cast Ray of Sickness. Perfect. On uh on the dust skull. Okay. Uh I'm assuming a 12 doesn't make it. Where is my spell DC at in D and D Beyond? Uh, oh, so, yes, a twelve doesn't make it. Okay, sorry, yeah. I found it as soon as I said that. Um, <laughs> yeah, it does not make it. Uh, so that is going to be two D eight. No, sorry, four D eight because I'm casting it at in a third level spell slot. Twenty two points oh, of my. psychic damage. Amazing. Uh, and that that looks like uh, sh with the hand that she's not concentrating on um, on the tentacles, she reaches out and there's uh, an orb, a small orb in her other hand, and it fills with this like uh, green smoke. Uh, and then this the same color of green sort of spikes out from it uh, and shoots right uh, in like the main uh, gap in its skull where its giant eye is or should be. I don't know if we clarified there's an eye or an eye hole. No, it's just a big glowing spot in an empty okay, eye Okay, yeah, socket. we'll shoot right to that. <laughs> yeah, you hit it dead on. You actually hear applause and some like oohs and ahs as you hit it. And this thing, uh, you actually blow some of the bones in the back of it out and it is bedraggled. There's a hole straight through it. And it's not looking too good. Is there anything else you want to do with your turn? Uh, and just just to know that it can't become hidden from me at any point. I have like psychic tabs on it from now on. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's it. And then I'll I'll peek. I'll duck back behind my stalagmite. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Uh, it is just sort of howling in fury and indignation. Uh, next up is Ruse, actually. Real quick, real quick. Uh, we've unlocked another accent change for Terry. <laughs> yes! Um, and we are $80 away from another accent change for Terry. Amazing. 
my voice teacher would be so proud of today. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Petra, you hear uh, shortly before uh, you get like a little tickle in your throat that like forces you to clear it. You hear chanting, new voice, new voice. <laughs> All right. What? What? Amazing. <laughs> Bruce, uh -huh. the, Bruce, the fake creature is up. Uh, uh, incredible. Um, Ruse, uh, this little like southern, like long piece of straw coming out of corner of her mouth goes, Oh, sugar, I got you covered. And whoom, uh, whips uh, this like flickering thin, it looks like a, a sword made of just like heat waves coming off a barbecue. Just whew, um, and she is going to bonus action teleport, use the fuming ability to get advantage of this next attack roll and make two attacks on the death tyrant. Uh, first one is with advantage. Uh, that's, uh, that's more like it. That's gonna be a 26 to hit. Absolutely hits. Cool. And then that's gonna be um, 17 to hit. Uh, 17 just hits. 17 just hits, so we're gonna go, that's gonna be uh, 2d6, but that becomes 4d6 over two hits, um, uh, plus, uh, uh, blah, 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 blah. that's gonna be plus 22. Um, Ruse does nine, uh, 12, 15, uh, 37 points of damage to the death time. Yes, all right. Uh, yeah, do you want to describe, uh, it is still technically alive, but break me off a little bit of what, what Ruse's attack looks like. Um, uh, <laughs> this is so dumb. I truly, because there's been all this time stopping, I want like mid, mid leap of Ruse being like, yeah, the for time to stop. And you just hear like, looks like them old face were at it again. <laughs> and then <laughs> like there's. And I think Anna realizes like, oh, I can add like color commentary to this special event as well. Uh, and then Ruse, there's a flurry of blade strikes from this fey warrior uh, as Ruse uh, attacks the death tyrant. Amazing. Uh, yeah, this thing is carved up. It's eyes sort of just floating. There are other points of light and almost all of the bone that made up this massive skull is broken out and floating freely. And all of you hear uh, a voice sort of interrupting over the audience's cheers and hoots and hollering. All right, we've got word up uh, up top. We're just gonna we're gonna follow it. We're just gonna see where this goes. Did anyone else Let hear? Here's is anyone else hearing something? I just came from Zoro, and I think. <laughs> That I think about well, boots and boots, but I think I heard a thing. Did you hear something? What Petra, are you talking you're about, out. Petra? <laughs> what? What's a boots and boots? <laughs> I believe it is a cat, but he wears boots for some reason. That's I do not absurd. understand. It's absurd. It seems absurd, but also cute, right? Uh, excuse me, what are they talking about? <laughs> What is, this? what is happening? Anyone Petra, else hear something? Up. Oh, just me. <laughs> okay, just me. Oh, it's me? Yeah. I have a turn? You have a turn. Ah, this thing fabulous. is looking on its last legs, by the way. <laughs> I have a turn. Great. So I must get my mace and swing towards the thing and maybe crack a skull. The skull is shattered apart. There's just sort of that a eye thing. It's just, it's just, just a, a glow, just a glow yeah. and pieces. Glow and pieces, similar to Puss and Boots. Glow and pieces. Yes, that's the the side quill no one asked for. Uh, great. Uh, we shall see what we get. Uh, I roll. Mm -hmm. You roll. Mm -hmm. We get an eye roll. <laughs> get it? <laughs> hey, chat, you did this. You did this. <laughs> I roll bad. I roll very bad. Uh, 
very, very bad. I roll a nine. Uh, a nine doesn't hit. What about your second attack? Right. Let's do second roll. <laughs> oh, shoot. I know I could have done it at the same time, but I roll too hard. I also roll very bad again. Uh, that is a uh, 12. <laughs> 12 doesn't hit. Okay, great. Uh, is there it anything you want to do with the bad bonus? luck of doing this accent? Yes? <laughs> is there anything you want to do with your bonus action or movement? <laughs> Oh, I want to not be uh, maybe so out in the open. Maybe I hide a little because I'm scared. <laughs> so Petra, this massive dragonborn with this huge mace, uh, they take two big swings and they actually like manage to knock some of that floating bone out of the air and hit it to the ground and sort of reduce it to powder. And once that sort of is clear, all that's left, you realize that the nexus of this creature is just that central floating eye. And it looks out on all of you. And the, the other 10 eye rays sort of coalesce and make a big, bright burst. I need everyone to make a wisdom saving throw for me. Even those that are fully hidden. I'll give you advantage Why? if you are fully hidden. Okay. Uh, 23. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. I didn't even need advantage. You did it. You're just good. Anna. 11. With that advantage, I got a dirty 20. Nice. Ulthus, you got an 11? Yeah. Ludwig. I got set uh, a 10. <laughs> and Petra. 30, 20. Perfect. Uh, just, just my golden oldies. Both of you standing out here, getting ready to like finish the fight properly. You take this full flashbang. I need you both to take 12 points of psychic damage as these uh, individual rays no longer have points of articulation. This thing is losing its sense of itself and is sort of fluttering through those, like a nightmare, those last bit of moments before you wake up where everything gets the worst it can be before you're jolted back into awareness. Um, and if they, if they started their turn in that space, they're going to take damage again. Oh shit. I mean, uh, it's not technically it's turn again. This is like a, this is a oh, legendary. Okay. Sorry. Sweet. Uh, Anna, you're up again. Whoo. Um, uh, you forgot summoners go a lot. <laughs> um uh um I am going to uh jump out from behind my hiding place and ready an action um for um I'm going to use a bonus action huh, action economy. I'm going <laughs> to use a bonus action to let fib attack the death tyrant use my action to ready an action for when fib goes which i believe is immediately after me um and then <laughs> fib goes after Ulfus. is this what it's like having children yeah a hundred percent so i gotta take timmy to skate practice and then i gotta get annabelle to choir and then i have gotta come home and make dinner but I got to get plus, some workout time in. So I was trying to get to this yoga class that I've been obsessed with. Plus you signed up for the bake sale and that's Saturday. So you have to start. <laughs> I just don't know when I'm going to fit in lying to my husband about how happy our marriage is. Um, I feel attacked by this. Thing. <laughs> with you and all your kids. Bria. Yeah. <laughs> We're right here. We're right here. <laughs> okay. Uh, Anna, what do you want to ready for uh, immediately after Fib goes? Uh, so, so Fib is going to attack on my turn because of yeah. my bonus action. And yeah. then I'm going to attack on Fib's turn because he will have taken the help action that will allow me to use my reaction to Eldritch Blast. So amazing. Can we get like a whiteboard? Maybe we need a whiteboard. <laughs> we need that I need like diagram with this. all the, yeah, the yarn and like- I have a like... full Pepe Silvia over here about my yeah. two summon, my familiar, because <laughs> it's my familiar, my summon, and then me, and they all have their own action economy. Yeah. So you got to figure it all oh, out. So they all um, have their own accents? Yes. <laughs> yes, they do. <laughs> uh, incredible. Okay, um, so let's get Fib's attack. 
attack. So here's Fib's attack. So uh, Anna's like, Fib, use your bow. Um, and Fib goes, you got it, boss. Um, and uh, Fib rolls. Oh, my God. Uh, only a 16 to hit. A 16 just misses. Twink! Ah! That's Lugats. offensive. That's offensive. Like a tiny little, uh, the little teeny arrow, f- like sails dead center into this eye and just sort of holds there. And you feel the light like sort of pulse down as if it's squinting, like, uh. And then it opens back again, like, oh, I'm still alive. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man damn it oh man i was dead on target gotta get more drawer in a bowstring next time <laughs> awesome Ulfus, you're up oh goodness okay how far away am i from the creepy skull magenta light creature um i'm gonna say you're only like 10 feet away okay i would like to who oh, um i'm going to attack it with a weapon instead of my uh, dragonborn breath this time. Uh, so here's what I'm going to do. All right. Bear with me, fam. Here's Let's what we're going to do. We're going to come in close, just a little bit closer, just a little, little bit closer. Hey, and speech. we're going to use dreadful strikes. Uh, so we're going to augment. Ulthus's weapon with some mind scarring magic. Yeah, yeah. So it's gonna do just like a little bit of extra psychic damage as a treat if I land it. Oh my god, as a treat. Yeah. Yeah, just just for funsies, you know. Um I'm I'm oh I'm nervous for this one though. I'm really nervous for this. Okay. I'ma try and do a little stabby stab. Ulthus do the stab. Ulthus is not a Hanging in there too hot, but uh, we're trying our best. Gosh darn it. Um, this is my first time using my new weapon. Let's see. What am I rolling? Uh, boop, 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 boop. That is a... Uh, uh, um, what is my modifier? Because I rolled a 12 and that is not super hot. I don't think that's going to hit with my modifier. Yeah, what's your attack to hit? Uh, you have to hit a 17 for what it's worth. I don't see my like regular attack on my character sheet. I only see for some reason my breath weapon and my unarmed strike. I don't know why it's not popping up with my little stabby sword. Uh, you might need to equip it. Oh, yeah. Oh, so if you're okay. looking under actions, you could go over to equipment and then click the little box to the left of the weapon. And then that oh, should Oh, yep. That's why. That's why. And then make sure Thank you're you. attuned to it as well. You can click on it's it. and then it'll... six to hit. So if you roll a 12 on the <gasps> dice, you hit. So that's an 18. Oh, my gosh. Amazing. Thank you. That is a plus six. We Perfect. figured it out, chat. I'm not great with D&D Beyond. Okay. So so I did hit. Yeah. I did hit. Amazing. You absolutely hit. Uh, we're going to do... Don't roll the damage. Don't just roll des- damage. Describe for me how Ulthus destroys the eye. Ah! Ah! Ulthus helped. Okay. Bonus points if you like push that little arrow from Fib in a little more. Ooh, oh, you know I sure would love strong. to. He did his best. I think Ulthus does a, a little bit of a sneaky sneak move. So mm. in terms of like she, she's very uh uh gene wilder in willy wonka where like she moves in a way that looks like she would be really really fragile and then at the last second you know when he does his little like tumble and stands up and he's totally fine Uh. she's kind of doing that kind of energy here where uh she's not exactly moving quickly and she does one stab that doesn't look like it would hit that hard and then she tilts the hilt of her short sword up so that pushes the arrow in as she tilts it goes and I think it's the arrow being nudged in that, like, really does the last bit of damage. Uh, and immediately she withdraws her short sword and just kind of tries to flick it off and clean it without it getting on her clothes. Because, mm-hmm. well, that just won't do. We don't have time for laundry here. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so she's just kind of trying to clean it and not even paying attention to the fact that it is just, like, absolutely fracturing and like collapsing on itself from the damage and and she just 
could not be fussed. She's just like concerned with how difficult it's going to be to get whatever kind of, I don't know if it would have some kind of like icker or something nasty that came out of it, but she does not care for that mess. Uh, the moment you sort of make contact, everyone feels just like this EMP of energy burst out and away. Uh, Sunette, can you make an arcana check for me? Oh, I'm, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yes, Annette, do it. <laughs> I love I love a good session one where everyone's still remembering their pretend names. Yeah. Yeah. Anna is me? I'm Anna? What? <laughs> I rolled an eight. Uh, yeah, you, you don't necessarily know what kind of energy just pushed out and away, but you feel this sort of burst and... Uh, like a thickness, a smokiness and oiliness that's been in the air seems to start to dissipate. And all of you hear just, all you hear is, ah, but you know that it is thunderous applause as you hear cheering and screaming and the laughter is, Ulthus, you ignore all of that and start cleaning your weapon from this like oily icker uh, from the eye as it was deleted from existence. And Anna, in that moment, you feel another pulse as everything freezes, but you don't. And uh, yeah, you hear you hear the voice that everyone hears now. Oh my God, they lived through it. That's so exciting. Okay, well, uh, we could just, that's great. I don't think we have to do a rundown on this. You wanna just wipe it here? Are we good? We can just bring them back now. Just, uh, oh. Um, I would like to do something here if I can. Actually. Yeah. Um, as I hear wipe them, as I hear something along the lines of like, they're going to end, they're going to end it. They're going to wipe us. Do we stop it here? <sighs> okay. This is full <laughs> malarkey. And yeah. I apologize. Um, I offered you a shenanigans uh, character. Please lean in. I want to cast banishment on that other world. I want to cast banishment on whoever the tether is. I want to cast banishment. If that's the MC and, and their voice, I want to cast banishment on that. But I have a spell slot left and I want to cast banishment. Yeah. Okay. Uh what does that look like? And also, I forgot the spell. I got excited. What do I do? Charisma saving throw. My DC is 16. Um, you attempt to send one creature that you can see within range to another plane of existence. The main thing here is when the targets come back if they're native to this plane. <clears throat> but things that are not native to this plane, if I hold concentration... This is shenanigans. Don't worry about those extra effects. Now, the problem here is... I would have to roll, but I'm pretty sure banishment works like a lot of other volitional uh, spells. Do you choose to fail the save, Anna? Oh, I can I just banish us? That's I, way better. I'm just gonna. I just I ask. That's I ask, a much better idea. Because to ban, do you choose to fail the save? Just yes, I do absolutely. And you hear uh, that MC that's like, okay, oh, oh, God, she can still fucking hear us no what are you doing no and in that like extra little bit of heartbeat this pause within a pause all of that sound all of that applause it all goes away and you push it you reach out with your little hands and you push it all from you and hide it in the gray until you decide when you want it to come back, if you want it to come back. And your identity being so like fractured as it is right now is also on the other side of that push, not fighting you, not fighting back because you chose this and turning and looking to other avenues. You see flashes of green and wild roses and feral, beautiful faces confused and excited and action beginning, but you push yourself away from that too, Anna. And you are left here in this cave with your friends. 
Wow. Great job, everyone. We beat that big <laughs> monster. <sighs> I suppose we did. Um, there. It's, it's something I've feels. Won a, yes. I've won another fight. <laughs> you seem uh, not happy about such things, Ludwig. It is what it is. Why so sad, you with the sad eyes? Don't be discouraged. In the world full of people. There's always one more fight. You know? Uh, I see your true colors, though, Ludwig, shining through. It's okay. Uh, all this. Thanks so much for saving me. I was really hurt. I'm actually still really hurt if I'm honest about it. Um, but Oh, the, the second that Ulthus hears Anna say that does not even wait. Uh, I would like to come over and, and heal my, my little bab, my little baby. I'm not going to let Anna not be well. Uh, and I would like to uh, use Hand of Healing. Oh. Uh. How much does that heal for? So you will get 1d6 plus 5 hit points. Do I get to roll that or does Anna roll that? I mean, it. I think you get to roll it. Okay. All right. Let's see. Let's see how helpful I am. Ooh, that. Ooh, hello. I rolled a six. So that's 11 <gasps> hit points. Oh, my God. I'm looking okay. so much better. Um... Oh, thank you so much, Ulthus. Uh, and I'm just going to lean my head against Ulthus's scaly leg. Um, and um, I think I, uh, my when I cast Banishment, Ruse disappeared right away. Yeah. Um, but I think I beckoned my familiar towards me, um, uh, who <laughs> it's like, I'm just going to, I think Fib just very quickly is like, hey, teamwork makes a dream work to Ulthus. He like knocked the arrow further into the boulder. Um, and uh, I'm going to look up at Ulthus and go, um, we kind of actually just won two fights, I think. Two? Yeah. Yeah. In a way, because there was one fight that we were fighting here with the death tyrant, and we could have died, and that would have been bad. But there's another fight that we're- Within our hearts, yes. The struggle is very real. You know, you fight yourself <laughs> most of your life, yes. Yeah, I think you don't realize how true what you're saying is on a literal level. We are probably fighting ourselves. And I'm not saying that as a metaphor, I'm saying that as logistically and practically as I possibly could, we are fighting ourselves. Right, right. Uh, the struggle in the heart and the mind. It's like two things in your body fight against each other. What mm -hmm. do you mean? Mi um, corazón y mi cabeza. Mm -hmm. There's problems inside. Yeah. Uh, no, 100%. Absolutely. Right. Um, okay. Um, well, this just kind of looks at Ludwig, like, and kind of, like, <laughs> does that head tilt? Like, are, we, are you getting this? I, I don't understand. I... I'm never fighting myself. I fight other people. Uh, I fight the gods. They seem to want me to go and, and go on and push me further than I want. I fight the gods. Yes, we all fight, fight with enemies. God, but that's also part of ourselves too. If we want to get into quantum physics and mechanics about it. No, no, it's not. It's not me. It's there is the gods. They, they, they. They push me towards it. Right. Uh, Dios, y Diablo, there's a struggle. No, I mean like physically, the, the gods they empower me and won't let me die. You mean you're blessed? You have it, like santos, holy santos that bless you. It feels like curse. And as you all uh, sort of discuss what may be happening here in that moment of relief, the coming down of adrenaline from defeating this great evil, while Anna 
stares out looking past you all and seeing more to this world than she and any of you believe could be possible. We're gonna take a break for a couple minutes. Ah. And we'll come back in like five to 10 and pick up where we left off. Woo-hoo.
Okay. I, I don't know what she did. I don't know where, why I can't reach through uh, like I am supposed to, but let's take this opportunity. We need to figure out options. Uh, we have finished my game. 
and it's time for them to come home. So we are working uh, hard behind the scenes to figure out uh, what the best extrication process is. And uh, just, you know what? Everyone just hold tight. Uh, we'll, we'll keep observing and we will figure out what to do uh, as soon as we can. And as everything sort of comes back up to speed and up to life for you five, uh, you find yourself traveling back away from the village that gratefully uh, showered you with what little treasures and gifts and feasts and gratitude that they had now that their world is no longer plagued by nightly uh, waves of the undead and you're all traveling back to your home. Can I get everyone to make a, just, just a wisdom check for me? Let me know if you break a 20. Natural 20. <gasps> Ooh. I got 23. An 11. Oh, no. I got, I got six. <laughs> uh, Sunette and Petra, both of you at different points as you are traveling back, you realize that you know that you're headed homeward. And it's not come up, but every time you reach towards the name of your home, it eludes you. You can't quite recall it. So I'm walking here and I'm trying to get back. And uh, <laughs> I feel like for some reason, I can't seem to find where my home is at. No, you know where your home is and you know you're headed there. You just don't have details. You guys remember where where we were from? Do you remember? Yeah, we, we're from. A, um. Yeah, old fussy, you look like you knew. You seem very confident in that response. What what, what was that? You, I thought you were going to say something. I I also thought I was going to say something, but I guess the name has eluded me. Mm, I've seen this before. It's when you're at this long enough, you're not really from anywhere. And you don't really have a sense of home anymore. We are just citizens of the the planet, the world, the something, yeah. You wake up, you go about your day, and if you survive, you have another one the next day. And you think, how did I get here? Well, that's nice, but what is the town we left before we went to deal with that monstrosity? What was it called? Do you want to know where we're really from or where you remember being from? Where we're really from? What do you mean, Anna? What are you talking well, about, Anna? Well, it's two different places. Because the thing that you're having a hard time remembering right now is probably a memory of where you're from. But that's only where you think you're from. If I'm not much mistaken, I think we're all really from, meaning the place we started was probably where we all first met. And everything before that is just a story. Was it where we were the top 1% of the 99% of the 1%? I think we probably are the top 1% of 1% of people in this world. Yeah. In terms of what we're like and what we really are. That seems like inequality, though. And I feel like maybe... Anna, I need you to make a persuasion check with disadvantage. And as she speaks, a very light scent of roses and sweet rot pervades the 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 road that you're walking down right now. Uh, disadvantaged persuasion is going to be an eleven. Okay, an eleven. Uh, you all have heard this strange little girl when she chooses to present as a little girl. Uh, rant and rave and talk about the weirdest shit. And this seems part and parcel to uh, your precious warlocks. You know, whole, it's really on brand for her. Take that how you will. I 
did something back in the fight. I changed something that I wasn't supposed to be able to change. And now we actually have time to figure out how to keep you all safe. Because we weren't safe before, and probably before too long we won't be safe again. But the evil has been neutralized. Safe from what? The other 99%. There, there is no safety in this world. No, you're right, there's not. But for a little bit of time, one threat, maybe the biggest threat, can't find us. They're looking for us, but they can't find us. We need to find someone who can help us because I think magic, I think magic can cross over. Careful magic can, anyway. Is anyone Hi. hungry? We had a big fight. I was just gonna say, maybe you need a, maybe you need a snack and a nap. <laughs> yeah. No, we I'm, can get a good slice, maybe of some pizza or maybe a, I don't know. Well, Thys is going to, uh, like, while they're walking without missing a beat, just kind of reach into her uh, pack and pull out. She has, you know how, like, moms always have granola bars or something in their purse? Yeah. She has, like, little different pockets that are earmarked for different moods that Anna might be in, what kind of snack might, like, bring her out of it a little bit. So, like, if she's hangry, if she's, like, a sad and she needs a, a cheer-up snack... If she seems a little distracted and she needs like a focus food kind of thing. So she kind of like rummages around and looks for the like, we just finished a really exhausting fight and Anna might need to replenish her energy kind of snack that she carries. And uh, kind of like futzes about with her purse for a bit. And then just wordlessly, like they've clearly done this so many times before, kind of unwraps it and just hands it uh, while continuing to walk to Anna for her to snack on. <gasps> Shortbread. <laughs> Anna, as you eat and you're kind of staring up at Ulthus, this like large sort of wizened mother figure for you. And you feel all of that like feeling and bond and years of understanding pass between you. Even as you're eating the shortbread and you feel like, oh, blood sugar shooting back up. You're not, you're not yourself while you're, you're hungry. There's this cold part in the bottom of your stomach because you know that whatever this is, though it feels so real, it's not. And you're the only one that can see it. Um, I'm going to look up at Ulthus and say, thanks so much for taking care of me all the time. It's really nice. Of course, Anna. And she's just going to kind of give her like a little, essentially like a little scritch, like you would uh, a cat. But even though she's the one giving a little scritch, she kind of does this like guttural, almost like purring sound um, with just like a tiny little uh, puff of smoke that's like a little tinge of electricity almost comes out of her nostrils when she does it. It's like happy cat in the sun kind of kind of thing. Uh I'm going to look up at Ulthus and smile, but I, I'm also going to make eye contact and hold her hand and try to impress. Cause I know that like Petra and Ludwig and Sinet are far away from where they need to be to believe me right now. And I'm going to count. On, I don't, I don't know how much time we have. So I'm going to count on Ulthus to try and connect with her. And I'm going to look up and say, it's very nice of you to take care of me because I'm, I guess I'm like a little kid and you're an old woman, but I need you to understand we're the same age. None of this is real. All this make a wisdom saving throw. Oh, that's a 21. There is something in Anna's tone and you hear her voice and so many other voices, like every illusion from the years you've spent together layered on top of one another speaking. 
and speaking a truth that hits you, not in your ears, but somewhere below your diaphragm, above your stomach, some core part that rocks you. It feels like it makes you stagger, though you're just standing locked in this moment and you see feathers and flowers and gold and jewels and you hear cruel laughter and callous gossip and you see green everywhere the vibrant most vibrant lush green you've ever seen something that you don't even believe your eyes here and now these eyes you no longer consider them your eyes but these eyes have never perceived before anna who are we who are we we are ourselves and there are a lot of people with a lot of power to hurt us and maybe even destroy us who don't think that that counts but it does count no matter what they say right. we to... yeah um Anna, where do we need to go? Hmm. We need to find help. Uh, and I'm <laughs> going to um, cast, um, I'm gonna cast locate animals or plants from the staff of the woodlands. Um, and I wanna use it to find, um, because I know that I've banished whatever that was, but I want to find something that I think is going to be helpful. So it's like locating animals or plants. And I think I'm looking for animals or plants that I can register some connection to the feeling I now feel of an understanding of the world. And I almost want to like cast it through my telepathy if possible. Yeah. Okay. Um, go ahead. Let's just make us like, just treat it like a spell attack. Hell yeah. I'm trying to see what you can get. Woo. Okay. Spell attack. Uh, 27. Oh my goodness. Uh, you send out this like creeping thought like a vine that rustles the grasses around you and sways the trees. Uh, you actually feel it hit all four of you, Ulfus, Ludwig, Petra and Sunette, Ludwig, it sort of bumps against you. Uh, you. You have a very special magic item, don't you? Yes. I, uh, Ludwig lost his eye uh, about a hundred years ago uh, and has uh, a, a very powerful eye patch that he had crafted that actually protects his mind from being read. Sweet. And Anna, uh, as you're like reaching out, you feel the sort of, you can feel everyone's minds here. Uh, Sunette's is a, a little, I'll say a little staticky, a little interesting because she is a wizard and so deeply arcane herself. You have a sense of being able to push through them in this way. Once again, kind of leaning into that idea that a lot of you are veiled, sort of robed in the arcane weave in a strange way that allows you to persist here like this. You bump on Ludwig, but you feel animals and plants and eventually uh, your mind alights on an old tree covered in vines, surrounded by and seeming to give off this uh, pleasant but thick fog. It's about a hundred yards ahead and deep off of the trail. We gotta go to the tree. And I'm going to just like merrily sprint down the road with my staff and- Where is she going? <laughs> fib flying behind me. To the tree. Uh, you all see Anna take off. Does anyone follow? Yeah, I think uh, Ludwig was like sitting on a stump while this was like happening. And he like just slowly like does that old man. <laughs> <sighs> just like starts trotting off. 
Uh, okay, as you're following, uh, yeah, you know what, Ludwig, give me, give me just like a history check. Okay. Uh, 18. Yeah, with an 18, you're sort of, you feel that heavy pressure, that arcane pressure off of Anna, and it feels different. You you smell that strange smell coming away from her, and you have a, a an interesting relationship with what you perceive to be gods. And something about that pressure, the strangeness of an already strange girl reaches you in a way, and you feel a singular pang of, if not alarm, not panic, because you are so, so very jaded by all of this by, like, by now, but you, you, you are also a little more bought in that there is something heavy happening with her, and her words have weight, and her concerns reach strangely towards uh, your own wrestling with your identity and your place in the world. And just as a reminder, uh, you've made a lot of friends over the over the years, and you know that uh, in particular there is a, a very old uh, drow named uh, Dibarak the Dreamer that deals with a lot of uh, fey problems. You know that she's a a, a very f- like fey ish arcane caster. That that could be helped too. But she she barrels off towards a tree. What's the rest of the group doing? I'll follow that little girl too. I'll follow my pretty little Anna to wherever she's going to. I hate that. Yes, <laughs> Petra, are you all right? <laughs> yes, they. Your my little is- pretty. Taken on many forms uh, over the course of the past few hours. There's been something different about me. Yes, I don't understand. Vo- really? Really? I haven't felt a change at all. I've been the same the whole time. <laughs> You're also a bit... <laughs> your mannerisms are a bit <laughs> different. What do you mean? I'm you doing a lot more of this. <laughs> I don't understand quite anything different, my dear. Do tell me more. Well, as we walked here, you were offering us uh, a cannoli and uh, smoking a cigar. And now you are, you have put your cloak over your head and you're making more aggressive uh, gestures at us. Yes, is that a problem? I would also like a cannoli and maybe a cigar. Sounds delicious. (laughs) Apparently, you already had them. <laughs> Did I not offer you? Oh, well. <laughs> Maybe you didn't deserve them. I, can't, I cannot eat sweets anymore. It's too much. We have to, <laughs> we have to think about your heart, Ludwig. Uh, heart? <laughs> I love to eat hearts. <laughs> what? <laughs> Petra? <laughs> And with that, <laughs> uh, you reach a, a very old tree stump. Uh, it's about six feet tall, and there are like branches l- lay scattered all about it. It was a a very like pale, almost a yellow birch bark sort of tree, three feet in diameter. And you can see the remains of it lying scattered around it as if it was struck by something and knocked down. And yet, as you get closer to it, Anna, you can see patterning in the bark that looks almost like a face. Ooh, a patterning in the bark looks almost like a face. You don't say. Feed it a hot dog. Would this (laughs) be a perfect time to cast Speak with Plants, perhaps? Um, yes, it would. All right, staff of the woodlands, I see you now. I mean, but also, like, <laughs> I I can just do that natively. Oh, well, shit. I would know Ludwig's powers. Well, you both yeah, can I mean, do it, so you can both. They can't. Have they like. I can't. I can't understand them. If it, in it, like, but I I just natively can speak and be understood by plants and animals as a furbo. 
Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Um, yeah, it's up to up to up to you. If we if we think the tree might have stuff to maybe it's worth casting just so that we can. Yeah, just so it yeah. actually talks back. <laughs> yeah, um, uh, I love that as a power of like I can speak to plants, and it's like well anyone can speak to plants. It's about. <laughs> no, no, you don't understand. They hear me though. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I love it. Um, plants. I love plants. <laughs> Petra looks for whatever reason like they want to like eat the tree. It's a very menacing vibe you're getting. I think yeah. I think for, just for, for my own identification, I think as as I'm standing there doing that, I just want Fib to be like, "You're getting a lot of pushback that this world is real, given that one of your best friends has been like four different people over the last ninety minutes." <laughs> Uh, you know what I'm saying? It seems like we can swallow this idea maybe a little easier. What do I know? I'm a two-inch fairy. Um, uh, and I'm gonna cast speak with plants on the uh, on the on the tree. Sweet. And uh, this like face, it's not at the top uh, where you would think a head would be. It's kind of off around the side under like the stump of a trunk, and one eye just sort of pops open. Okay. Hello. Hello. That's weird. I, people don't talk. Anyway, and kind of closes its eyes again. No, 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 no. People do talk all the time, famously. And I, and, but mostly they don't talk plant, and plants don't talk people. But I can do both. Hello and good morning. I'm sorry for waking you up. Oh, oh. <laughs> <coughs> You're fine. What can I do for you? Ooh. Um, we, me and my friends. Hi, I'm Anna. These are my friends, Petra, Ulthus, Ludwig, Sinet, and this is my familiar Fib. He's a fairy. And and you see a little runnel of ants, like, kind of dips out of the top and runs down. Like, I don't know how to bow, so I made ants come out. <laughs> um, I'm going to look and go, wow, oh, that's so many ants. What are their names? Oh, uh, and you actually see all of the ants like stop and turn and look at you and they're like waggling their little antenna. And uh, she just, it, I guess the tree is a girl now. I've given it pronouns. <laughs> <laughs> and the tree goes, that's, do you want to give me all of their names? Can you talk to them? They can just tell you. Okay, gotcha. Yes, yes, yes. Um, uh, I think I will ask the ants to, I don't want to be rude, so I'll introduce myself to the ants um, uh, and ask for their names as well uh, as they appear to be part of the tree's greeting. Um, uh, and depending on the response I get, we will either be here for a long time. We'll either be here forever. So I will say that uh, passively, since they all waggled, you have a sense that there's like their little like, whatever the front bit is, is moving. They realize that you don't understand them and they're just going to start spelling out a series of names in <laughs> ants. And they're just giving a rundown of all of them. It's just in alphabetical order. Uh, they all, they're all five letters long. It's just like Alfie, Annie, Arm, <laughs> Arma. And they're just going down the list and everyone's going to have a turn. So you just see a constant like run of names. Brilliant. Yeah. Um, I am a warlock of the lady above, my patron, the Archfey Marionetta. And I thought for a long time that I had been whisked away like, like a changeling child, that I'd been brought to fairy and given these powers. But I think... I think they made a mistake and I don't think these fairies, I don't think they're interested in mortal beings because they want to help or hurt us. I think they're interested in us because we're funny to them. We amuse them. Yes. And Go on. I don't want me and my friends to die when our story is over. And I don't want us to be destroyed just because we're not fun to someone anymore. I have seen many, yes, many like you over 
countless years. And uh, even though uh, this tree, this lovely tree lady uh, is sort of just a trunk, all of those branches on the ground that are kind of grown over and even decaying a little bit, uh, they all begin to rustle and kick up like a really loud din just in case they can hear. Yes, you, Marionetta. Yes, they they are long lived and require entertainment, blood, triumph, death, heroics, all of that. And you are not their pawns. You are their puppets. What will you do? You could try to hide. They will find you. How far would you go to stay here? I don't know that the answer is to stay here. They saw fit to come into our world and play with the nature of our reality. Huh. Seems only fair to return the favor. <laughs> uh, I need you to make... Give me a charisma saving throw, Anna. Hell yeah, I can do that. That's a 23! Yeah, uh, then I will give you the opportunity to not notice this as you're doing it. Because mm -hmm. you've gotten very close to this tree with a very, uh, who's got a very low, scratchy tone. Uh, and you look at the edges uh, just beyond where the ants are continuing to spell their names. They're at the letter D now. They're getting through it at a very, very fast clip. Mm -hmm. And the very edge of the bark rots away and the leaves on the ground are beginning to dampen and rot and sort of sink down into the forest floor as if uh, it's one of those videos where you see like the time lapse of like nature taking its course happen uh, at like 10x speed. And Anna, you realize that you are doing this. Um, I am going to... Um, okay. Um, I can tell that I am hurting no, this. Sorry, one second. It's me. There's a thousand parrots outside of my, go ahead. <laughs> uh, I can tell that my presence here is harming this creature. Um, I am going to uh, attempt to wrap it up, I think. I don't think I know any magic that can help this being. But I'm just going to say, um, Tree, I want to leave before I hurt you past what you can heal yourself. How do we get to the outside world? How do we fight the Arch Fey? How do we prove to them that the things you make don't stay yours? Don't worry about me. I am real. I am part of a cycle. Fay touched though I am. And this is part of that too. The truth you need to know is this, Marionette. You are in the real world. And you are a part of another real world. This is just as much a truth, a true place, not a stage, but life. And if you want to sever the bridge between the two, you must destroy the other part of yourself. Take it from you, banish the Fae your warlock patron, whatever you, whatever construct you have that allows you to hold both things in your mind together. 
and you feel uh, below all of your feet, the leaves sort of rustle, even as they are like rotting away and kind of swirl around you all. And each of you has a sense, a flash of another place, more vibrant, more real, uh, less full of feeling, but more full of action than you can, you have ever imagined your life here to be. And it all settles down again. And that, that flash leaves you. Kill it, kill them, entertain them. None of it matters. The only thing that matters is a choice. I need to talk to my friends. Okay. I don't want to do anything without them. You're very strong. Do Thanks, not. Tree. Oh, thank, thank you. Oh, they're going to be here doing the, the ant name thing for a while. You can just go. You're I noticed a lot of Daves. Yeah, they're not too good with, you know, the generational names. A lot of juniors. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, goodbye. Thank you for not rotting me to death. Okay, goodbye. Uh, and I'm going to sprint a little bit away from the tree so I'm not destroying it with my presence. <laughs> um, um, and I'm going to look up at all my friends. Um, I'm very tired and very sleepy. And, but we also should have a talk about, I think some very confusing stuff is happening. And I'm sorry. Cause I know that a lot of times when I say stuff, you guys look at me like, blah, 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 like what? I don't understand. But um, maybe it would be better if we were all sitting down and had something to eat while we talked about stuff that is this scary. You think something scary? I forgot. <laughs> I forgot too. Petra, we really need to maybe tone down the <laughs> wicked energy. Do we have maybe some apples, perhaps? For yes. I, I could get you an apple. <laughs> and it, like it, Ludwig puts his hand on his tree. It's like, my friend, could you help us with some apples? And asks the tree if, if it can make some apples this for us. This tree is definitely a maple, but you feel it's like grown. And then a branch lowers down a bough, like fully weighted down with uh, pink lady apples. Delicious. Wow, these taste just like maple syrup. That's incredible. <laughs> I'm sorry I did that. <laughs> wow, that's a, I, that's a varietal I've never had before. That's, that's incredible. Uh, it's magical, you, you, brand you, new. <laughs> Sunette, make uh, just an intelligence check for me. Okie dokie. Give advantage. Uh, ooh, natural 20 on the second roll. So. Oh, 26. Yeah, uh, the natural 20 will do. Sunette, mm -hmm. you, you started clocking that Petra's actions and mannerisms were different than they had ever uh, had before. And that offhand comment, that realization triggered something in you that you realized that they keep doing this and that they have been doing this for as long as you've known them for years. Their personality, their affectation, their appearance has changed over and over again, mostly with no one, no one in your group ever being the wiser. And you remember that. Maybe this is nothing new, Petra. Maybe we've been through this before. You've been through this before. Do you think we're trapped in a spell of some sort? I mean, that certainly would explain a lot. Magic. 
magics. Yes. But based on what Anna is saying, perhaps something much grander than that. I, I don't I don't know much about magics. I know I'm tired and I didn't want an end to it. And I have a friend who's helped me with fey problems in the past that we could seek out if this is what we want. Yes, a quest. I like fey problems. What does this have to do with the fey? It has everything to do with the fey. All of our problems come from the fey. Every bad thing that's ever happened to us, every trial or hardship we've gone through, all of the worst moments of our lives were created because someone thought it would make a compelling story and it didn't have to be that way and the people that did it should pay i think revenge <laughs> something like that um uh i'm gonna change my form into marionetta into that that fairy queen we saw before just to see if i can just casting disguise self yeah um Give me a wisdom saving throw. Mm -hmm. Your DC is a 19. I just literally rolled exactly a 19. Ah. That oh, is absolutely beautiful. wild. Absolutely wild. Take that, Abria. No, it's okay. I'll still do what I want. I don't care about DC. <laughs> no. I wasn't uh, going to acknowledge that role at any point. <laughs> no. Uh, you, you strain to find that form again. And as you do it, you feel some force external to yourself trying to tweak it, to, to push your volition away from that form. But you, you push it back and you settle in into it and you stand before the group as Marionetta, this like tall, beautiful, regal, elven, feral-looking humanoid. And Marionetta begins to speak, but Anna, this isn't quite you. The feeds are kind of bouncing together, and you hear her say out loud, oh, okay, well, we'll send in, we're not going to send in a team. Apparently, they're enjoying this. So, uh, yeah. You know, normal protocols. We'll send in some of the uh, larger beasts. We'll get them out in the next hour, hour and a half. And you all see Marionetta freeze and realize that she's looking at you. And you what? all feel... Oh, go ahead. I think Ulthus just looks over her, her shoulder and goes, Where are you talking to? What? Uh, nothing. I'm... Uh, Anna? What? What was, what was the name? Anna. Anna. I'm Anna, and I'm just doing little kid things. <laughs> and uh, that secondary present sort of like begins to pull away. And Anna, you have control over yourself. Still in the marionetta form, I'm going to say to to no one out to no one that my friends can see. Just go. You made a really big mistake. What you've done to me is not nice, and. I'm going to make you pay. You've been running me around for a long time, and you'd better understand that that won't be tolerated anymore. You coming into our world, that's over. I'm going to find a way into yours, and I'm going to teach you that it's not nice to treat people like toys. Uh, and I'm going to change back into um, Anna, into the little girl. Uh, as you are transforming back, it's sort of a, a like a low to high transformation. And in that last second with Marionetta's face, you see fear on it. 
and then you go back to yourself again. Um, they're going to be coming for us with some kind of beasts. They're sending something here, so we're not safe. We should go find a safe place and rest again so that we can be ready for another fight. Sweet. Well, perhaps. Well, sounds, that sounds lovely. I think oh. we should uh, maybe think about grabbing some wine, maybe a baguette, maybe some fromage for the journey. What do you think? What's um, going on with Petra? <laughs> I feel like maybe I just want to relax. Just have some wine. Uh, are we traveling again? <laughs> Ludwig, do you want to take point and lead them to your friend? Yeah. Correct? I will lead them over there. Okay, go ahead and uh, make a survival check for me. I'm pretty good at those. Let's see how that goes. Yeah, that'll do well. 23. Nice. You're doing great. Uh, you're leading the group. Uh, Petra, you are just chain smoking and eating a baguette as you go. Uh, and it takes you about a day and a half. You have normal nights of sleep. We're just going to light that. And uh, deep in the woods, uh, that, that fog that was rolling off of the very kindly old tree covered in ants it seems to persist everywhere and the air has taken on like a cool but humid uh, cadence to it and the ground is getting run over with these massive uh piles of kudzu this like hyper violent green foliage that covers other trees smothering them rocks even buildings at the very center of this massive spread, there's one little shack completely untouched by the plants. And you're able to slowly kind of step over the terrain and make your way in. And before you even knock at the door, it flies open and you see a beautiful, uh, quaint cottage full of like dried flowers hanging everywhere and bubbling cauldrons and a very old drow kind of kind of thick and dumpy in her old age. And she gives a little curtsy to you all, beckons you in, says, hello, I'm Dibarak. Please come in. Enchanté, they madame. <laughs> You're Merci. So oh, okay. oh, okay, okay. What can I do for you, Ludwig? Dibarak, my old friend, uh... I feel as though I need your help once more. I'm sorry, I, I only seem to return when I need things. It's, I understand how things go, and I love being left mostly to my own devices, too. What can I do for you? You have, Go away, I, Paris. Yeah. Oh, my God. Well, this young woman here is... My friend and travel companion, Anna. Hi, it's very nice to meet you. Um, we need a place to rest and eat for a moment. Uh, would it be all right if we stay with you for a little bit of time? I am not going to lie to you. We are being pursued by very dangerous people, and you are risking life and limb by allowing us to stay. But it would be a big, big, big favor, and we'd love you for it. If <laughs> you make a persuasion check. <laughs> She's like, oh, that was honest. Uh, hey, 23. Yeah. And she sort of nods and then grows really quiet and seems to grow so still that you think for just a half a heartbeat that she's a statue. <sighs> yes. Maybe it is better that you stay. Of course, whatever comes, my plants will warn me. And we will handle them as they arrive. But you are safe here within my house, as safe as I can make it. Um, what are you running from, all of you? Possibly everything, but we're going to find out. I think maybe it's the truth of some sort. Okay, that was sure. Uh <laughs> And uh, she's going to slide over to you, Sonette. You 
You're very magical. Yes, dear. Yes, you are. Yes. Um, I suppose I am. May I... May I walk in your dreams for just a moment, please? My dreams, I'm not sleeping. I, I will make some tea and you all look a bit bedraggled. Just a nap. 20 minutes. Sonette's uh, going to look at Ludwig. And just is looking for any sort of affirmation that that's a good idea. I can't walk through his. I would have gone to him first, but. He no, she's fired. looking to be like, is that safe if I let this person I don't know do that? Yeah, she's trying to just call me from the side. And oh, also okay, is okay, like okay. kind of flipping off <laughs> Ludwig. Just, mm. Someone's got a magic item that doesn't allow for telepathy things. Mm. So I got to find. My it. dreams are my own. Well, sure, I guess. Does Ludwig give Sinet any sort of signal that this is safe? Because <laughs> that's not reassuring. <laughs> I have I have known Sinet for a very long time. She's almost as old as I am. She I'm has Sinet. never. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm, 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 so one. We don't know character yeah. names. Names are nothing. I've known her for a very long time. She is a truthful person who means you no harm. And I'm um, also tired, also tired. I could sleep all day. Yes? It's that if you do not want, I think the one singing is volunteering. I'm just giving you options. I'll uh, do it, but I, I think maybe it would be good to give Petra some of that tea as well. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna make a really big pot. Hold on, <laughs> and it takes her like a like a hot hour just to shamble about her tiny uh, her tiny little cottage and make tea. I think Olthus kind of putters about with her and does the the like um, mum thing of helping out with like prepping the little tray and helping her get little yeah. cups out and kind of straightening so nice things. Yeah probably a little too familiar she's like starts doing dishes in the kitchen and stuff and starts like tidying up this woman's oh. space just trying to be helpful is so into it she's like it's so nice when young people are respectful of their elders <laughs> and she like shambles about the rest of you could learn from her what a good girl <laughs> she pats you on your slightly less old <laughs> hands and I think the work ethic of so many places is just uh, people work too hard. Is what I think. And you see her like drop something extra in Petra's cup as she brings it over, sets it down. And I, as I lounge a little bit more, like deeply into one of her little chairs of some sort, like making myself just like uh, very, very oh, overly my. comfortable in her home. <laughs> yeah, not into it this is a no shoe house and very few people respect that uh and she puts the tray down and then like offers you sinet specifically one of them thank you okay i'm just gonna do a little peeksy peek if you don't mind just take a don't call it that i'll take it back <laughs> What do you want me to call it? I'm going to walk through your subconscious. It's weird. I would prefer I something want... literal, yes. Okay, I'm going to go look at your drink. Just drink the fucking tea, please. All right. Jeez. Young people. Tonight we'll uh, we'll slip uh slip. We'll sip the sip the tea and knock the very last bits of dregs back into her throat. Nice. Uh, Petra, if you drink the tea, you conk out immediately. And it's like a, it's a snoring, drooling, unattractive, like. Mm. You mean like my real life? Nap. I feel yeah. like. <laughs> really does good nap. Called me out. I'm the lady on the airplane. They're like, ma'am, ma'am. Like, <laughs> yeah, you yeah. just lump against Anna and you are just <laughs> out and snoring. Oh my god. <laughs> and actual Sinet, footage, actual footage. <laughs> Sinet, as you drift off, uh where where does Sinet find like what what is her calm space? 
Where mm. would she be if she could be anywhere? I think it's like a it's a small nook on the edge of a kitchen. Uh, and the sun is barely peeking through the window and there's a small white flower in a tiny vase at the center of the table. And uh, she has like a hot uh, beverage sitting in front of her. And she's staring at the birds outside the window. Nice. Uh, and as you're kind of staring at the birds, the white flower swivels in its vase towards you, opens up a bit like a sunflower, and you hear uh, Dibarak the Dreamer's voice coming from it just very softly. Ah, interesting. I don't mean to alarm you, but this, whatever this is, constructed a placeholder. What do you mean this is my... Mother's kitchen. <laughs> you. How kind would you like me to be? You sp asked me to speak plainly with you before. I would do so now if you promised not to have, you know, just a catastrophic psychological collapse killing me in here. I will do my best. Okay. Please open the window. Uh, Senate gives the flower a look, but then stands up, pushing the chair backward with the back of her thighs, and then re leans over the table to swivel open the window. And as the window swivels open, you hear the sound of just a riot of parrots in trees in a top canopy. You feel... Uh, a heavy, humid warmth that you've never experienced in these climbs in Sinet's life. Uh, they sort of stagger back from the heat and noise of it. And you see faces in the, the foliage. You see a large wall of leaves and people looking out from it and looking at you and going back to their drinks. And in the sky above the line of green, three moons, large looming, one of them almost translucent. Uh, Sunette looks back at the flower. Yes, your mother's home. A delightful cover, but the place you're looking out at, a garden, savage, that is your home. You are motherless. None of this. And the flower seems to open a little more and gestures out around you and it all begins to go to gray. It feels real like a reality, but just doesn't have the saturation of colors, everything outside of the window. All of this was made to help you fill the gaps so you could do what you needed to do here. Sunette looks back through the window and then pulls a knee up onto the table and sticks her like arm and like the first, like from her shoulders head up out the window. Uh, the moment you push through, you feel yourself changing, but you go to like, look at your limbs to try to catch your affliction in the window. And it's obscured from your view. It's as if light hits it and kind of causes you to blink back and look away. You are incapable of perceiving yourself, your true self. So it's like, I just don't, like that arm isn't there? Yeah, you like go to look down, but you feel a glare and you can't quite look down at, or look, look over at your arm. And trying um, to catch it in any sort of reflective surface, like in the window right. as it's extended out, doesn't work either. Um, I think Sunette will take uh, her other arm and put it over 
uh, her eyes, and then they will pull up their other leg and do a a small hop out of the window. Uh, You go to hop, and you feel uh, your composition change. You become lighter and lither and longer and more attenuated. You are more yourself dropping back into your truest form, but you feel something grab you by the scruff of the neck. An old woman's wrinkled hand, and she rips you back into the room. If you leave, you will stay gone. Do you want to abandon your friends to their fate here? Something bad is coming. The leaves have told me. But if none of it's real, they don't need saving. (laughs) They're not real. You're not wrong, but they believe it's true. And little marionette believes it most of all. Anna. Sure. (laughs) Can we all get out the window? A window. Passage. If a return home is all you require, let nature take its course. But if you want to stay, you're going to have to fight. Anna wants to fight. But we are meant to die. That's true for all creatures. You can pick the terms. Will you let it happen? I guess we'll find out. Mm. Good. And as you sort of are like pulled back from the window, you come back into the form that you know as Sinet. Uh, You can now feel the difference, the sort of, the suit that you are wearing is the best way to put it, that it's not quite right. It doesn't quite fit. It's too tight and too limiting. And as you wake up, you're holding that little white flower in your hands. I think uh, Sinet will just lay there blinking away that experience and then then pulling the uh, flower in front of their face and just staring contemplatively into it. All of you, something is coming. You've been asleep for maybe an hour, maybe less. Uh, All of you have the benefits of a long rest. Everything is back up to full. But you were right. You were followed. Something mean, angry, is here to rip you and all of this apart. But it's okay. It's not real. Nothing is. And she just sort of walks out the back. And you see as Dibarak the dreamer just sort of disappears into the kudzu in her backyard. And you're left in this cottage alone. That's really pretty flower, Sinet. Thank you. I... It's from my mother's kitchen. I I, go ahead. Ulthus is going to start gathering the, um, like the cups that they drank from, and is going to start clearing things up. And as she's walking around, uh, kind of tidying up and preparing to do the dishes under her breath, you can kind of hear her just going, "Ulthus Avis, Ulthus Avis, yes, oh, that's my name, Ulthus Avis." Just like over and over, kind of talking to herself. Uh, can I get everyone to make a perception check for me? 
And tell me which sense you are leaning into. <laughs> Let's start with Negs. Girl, that's a 24. Oh, holy, all right, beans. What? Smell, she's using her little sniffer. Use the little sniffo. Okay. Uh, well, then let's start with Olthus. Uh, you are sort of cleaning up everywhere. And uh, as you put things away, you're sort of getting like puffs and whiffs of different jars and canisters of herbs. But then this smell of like clean rain soaked dirt sort of like starts to overpower everything. And you look out the window and there's a mound shifting this hill of kudzu up and it's just rolling towards you in the distance. Uh, boy. Uh, and Ulthus is just like struck, like no words are coming to her and she just points. Sweet. Uh, for anyone that rolled over a 15 on that perception check, I'm going to give you one, like, basically a surprise round to deal with whatever's coming before we actually, like, roll full initiative and get into it. Um, I will be summoning a fey creature. I'll be summoning Ruse again. Yay, Ruse! Woo! Ruse appears again. Uh, she's wearing those Daisy Dukes, but she does have a jacket on because it's a little chillier here. Makes sense. Yeah. But Makes the sense. booty meat's still out, and so we all respect <laughs> it. That was in one of the tweets. We had to deliver on the promise of the premise. Yep. You know, yeah. <laughs> uh, Ludwig, you, did you also roll over? Yeah, I rolled a 17. I imagine he was basically sitting there, like sharpening his sword with a wet so with a whetstone while this was all happening, and notice and could just see it. Nice coming. So yeah, he just he he stands up and he begins to just like stretch and like crack his joints, and and says, "I don't know what is coming, but I am not running from it." And if you choose to, I will buy you the time you need. All right. Okay. Uh, does anyone? Well, yeah. All right. Uh, this thing sort of rolls in the distance. And when it gets about 50 feet away, all of that uh, earth that was being moved explodes upward. You see beautiful dark soil just sort of scattering in every direction. And the first things to arrive out of this massive crater are two large beasts, feline in nature with slick, shiny black fur over incredibly muscular bodies, six legs and two tentacles wrapping up and over from its shoulders as they snap and look around and growl. And you see them, Anna, look at you. And they give a little growl, a yip, a bark, some sort of communication as these two displacer beasts move in your direction. I had a I roll. Oh, yeah. What do you want to prepare? I'm sorry. You were oh, reading so fine. politely and I don't know how to respect other people. No, I didn't say anything because uh, I'm a <laughs> coward. Um, can I cast uh, protection from evil and good on Anna? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so that'll give you um, protection from aberrations, celestials, elementals, fey, fiends, and undead. Well, Woo! I yeah, had one of those things specifically is going to come in really handy. I had wanted yeah. to do that, but I rolled a three, so I didn't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> so they'll have disadvantage on attack rolls against Anna. Perfect. And Anna can't be charmed, frightened, or possessed by them. Oh, I hate it. I hate this spell a lot. You're <laughs> welcome. No. It's a cantrip. No, it's a first <laughs> level. <laughs> Sweet. So uh, as they sort of lock in and see you all standing there within the like 
large window of this little cottage. Uh, you see them like scatter out of sight. They get really low under that plant line again and start moving around in opposite directions to try to flank the house. So I need everyone to please roll initiative. Yeah! And we're gonna do some uh, bad kitty fights. Meow meow. Meow meows. Meow meow. I got an 11. Okay, hold on one sec. Oh good, one rolled like I roll. 16 and a two. <laughs> All right. Their names are Roscoe and DeSoto for anyone that has seen uh, Oliver and Company in the last 20 years. Oh my I love, God. I love. Okay, uh, Sunet, what did you get? An 11. 11. Uh, Petra. Uh, a nine. Ludwig. Also a nine. Oh, uh, who's got the higher dex betwixt the two of you? My dexterity is 10. Petra? Eight. Okay, Ludwig gets to go first. Those are both very low, let me be super clear. Uh, <laughs> just in case y'all didn't know you suck, I just want to let you know that you suck. <laughs> I'm old. And I don't move so good anymore. You're, you're no, fair. you cannot pull. I'm the not old, old but I have other. I have other skills that I'm much better at. <laughs> you, you straight up said I'm a good murderer or something like that. Yeah, <laughs> I'm very strong, and I can take a hit. <laughs> okay, uh, Olfus, what'd you get? Uh, dirty twenty. Oh snap! All right, and oh my uh, god, I forgot about this fucking joke. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I forgot about the impatient displacer beast joke too. And now no one, really a happy. volume warning if you fucking watch that clip. <laughs> That's right. It's just me guttural screaming. <laughs> <laughs> Spoiler alert. Uh, I, Anna, I need uh, your initiative, Ruse's initiative, and Fib's initiative. Great. Um, that's going to be 18 for Ruse, okay. 12 for Fib, and 6 for Anna. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Perfect. And that means, Ulfus, you are up first. Uh, oh, with your God. incredibly high perception, I'm just going to say that you are able, because you're like kind of at the sink putting stuff away, and you clock this first, you're able to see one of the displacer beasts like kind of wrapping around and is headed towards the side door that's going to be like 10 feet away from you. Oh, okay. Um, I'd like to cast Hunter's Mark on it first and foremost done and then i would like to follow that up with boop, 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 boop. uh let's do how far away did you say it was from me uh so i'm gonna say it's about 30 feet and it's headed towards the side door of the house so the question is like do you want to let it come in and fight it on the inside of the house or go outside and meet it I would like to move. I'm very concerned about the house being damaged. Uh, so Ulthus would like to, like, move to try to take the fight outside. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and then... I'm a, You know what? Let, let's just do it right out the gate. I'm going to try and hit it with my breath weapon. Yes! So the dex DC is 10. Okay, okay. Uh, my God. Well, that should have been an easy win. I rolled a natural two, so go ahead. Yay! These are so I'm, ding I'm ding. I'm glad ding. I don't feel alone right now, man. What a nightmare! I've been rolling pretty bad the whole time. No, no, I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm not. No, stop. Okay, that's fifteen damage. <laughs> no, my kittens. That's fifteen damage, and then. I'm trying to see if there's anything else I can do far away. So I get, okay, I get two attacks per action. Beautiful. How close can I get to this thing in terms of like using my bonus action to yeah. move for it? With your full movement, you're able to like intercept it probably 20 feet outside of the door. Okay. So and I like still your have breath weapon, like tears up all of the plant cover that it was using to try to like sneak up. And you just have like this little, it's not like a full crater, but like a little churned earth 
area with this revealed displacer that's that looks very surprised about what just happened to it. And yeah, you are clear for a couple of attacky attacks. So I can still do one more attack besides my breath weapon then. Is your breath weapon an action or a bonus action? Uh, I think it's bonus. It, it's action. It is action. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, go ahead. We'll let you get just one more attack in and then whatever you want to do for your bonus. Okay. So uh, I think breathing is a free action. So why is a breath attack <laughs> um, an action? Some of us have to think about it every time we do it, Vanna. <laughs> so... I we're going to we're going to do something new together for the first time cuz I've never played a monk before. Hooray! I do have flurry of blows as my bonus action. So uh, hit first and then flurry. So I'm just doing an unarmed attack for my like unarmed strike for the first one, correct? Perfect. Yeah. Okay, cool. So that is let's see. Ooh, that did not go well. That was a 10 to hit. A 10 just misses. Ooh, okay. I think, so does that use everything up then? Or does that uh, not use my bonus action? If I didn't land the hit, I'm not using the bonus action to do Flurry of Blows. God, you don't, Dina, this. <laughs> you don't have to, like, Flurry of Blows is a different, like, it's a yeah. different action. So if you miss with your regular attack, you can still Flurry yeah. and punch again. Okay. Thank you, Eric, that played a monk for, like, a year. I was going to say, I'm so you. glad you're here for this. <laughs> so then in terms of doing that, am I just rolling? It has its own thing that I can roll. Okay. So I'm going to roll for that. Oh, 25 to hit. Nice. Yeah, absolutely hits. Okay. So... I am going to, uh, it looks like the save DC is, this is so confusing to me. How did you ever learn this, Eric? Uh, My I'm, brain doesn't work like other people's. I'm rolling damage. It's okay. honestly a gift, Eric. You are a gift. Yeah. I rolled eight damage. Okay. What I'm trying to see is if I can spend extra key points to like increase that or not. I mean, it's. I don't believe you can. I don't think so, you right? might be able to stun with a key point. Okay. I'm sorry, chat. This is my first time playing this build. You don't need to don't apologize, very chat. Soon, but okay, I'm just making sure. Um, you know what? I can spend one key point with flurry of blows. It says to take the disengage or dash action. So mm -hmm. can I just disengage after that then? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so that's eight damage, I think I said. And then yep. I'll disengage. Perfect. And as you bounce back and away from uh, Roscoe. <laughs> also, uh, DJ, who says uh, Hunter's Mark damage. Yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, I already rolled with it. Yeah. Oh, smart. I already did that. I have was with never my... gotten Hummer, Hunter's damage. <laughs> I'm good at remembering that one. That was the 4d6 that I already rolled, which I think was, I think that one came to 15 damage. Yeah. Nice. So 15 plus eight. My total. Beautiful. All right. And then you kind of flow back. Uh, do you, yeah, you're still on the outside of the house. There's the indoor, like the door is open. So the rest of the group can see you. Uh, and then next up is Ruse. Uh, Ruse is going to jump right into the spot. Like as, as Ulthus, uh comes in and like breath weapon wails on this displacer beast and then vacates that space. Roos is going to leap into the fray. Um, uh, gonna do is a fuming fay, which just means that uh, she gets advantage on that first attack. Um, uh, and Hold on. And in that moment, everything freezes a little bit. And Anna, you are stuck, but you can hear all of this happening. Okay, okay. I know we're trying to clean up some mistakes here, but that thing that's attacking our beautiful little kitties is also Faye. And I don't know if I want to let that happen. So how are we feeling, group? Should we we could just we could just get rid of the the Faye creature and the Daisy Dukes or make it harder to hit or something. We have got to get these guys back. We don't have the budget to keep going. We were slotted for a very specific time and we are running, we're running over people. I can hear the orchestra spinning up. So what are we going to do about this? <laughs> All right, we'll talk about it. We'll let this one go. 
and everything kind of goes up to speed and you see Roos hesitate just a little bit and then goes in to attack. Uh, hell yes. This first one is going to be, let me just double check that I know what I'm throwing down on the to hit here. Uh, yes. Um, okay. Uh, first one's going to be 27 to hit. Yeah, absolutely hit. Next one's going to be, uh, uh, sorry, well, actually that, that one's not with advantage. Let me reroll that. Uh, 21 to hit. Hits. Okay. So that's going to be once again, uh, uh, that's three plus, uh, four, seven, uh, bum, bum, bum. okay. So many days. Nine, 13, 15. Beautiful. Uh, 29 points of damage from Roos to that displacer beast. Oh, I don't like her at all. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, and as a Roos finishes up like hitting, you hear a little bit of that feedback come out of her mouth as she sits and waits and you can hear her speaking with multiple voices discussing what will be done about her and if we should leave her in the fight. Um, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll reach out with telepathy to Roos, which is like a comment, like, like, you know, one of my like most loyal summons. And I'm going to, to the best of my ability, just say, it's your choice to make. You don't have to let people push you around just because you're not real. Amazing. And yeah, uh, Ruth shakes it off and sort of rolls their shoulders and prepares to like block and kind of give you all a little bit of room. Doesn't disengage so there's no opportunity attack. But yeah, uh, next up is my beautiful Displacer Beast who is going to lunge towards Ulthus and do some do some hits real quick if you wouldn't mind. Uh, just, to, just to ask, just to oh, be yeah. crunchy, I know this is theater of the mind, by engaging with Ulthus, does Roos get an opportunity attack on the Displacer Beast as it moves away? Uh, I, you know, yeah, super does. Woo! Thanks, buddy. And... <laughs> That's a hot 14. <laughs> so. It's a displacer beast. It's not wearing armor that hits. Woo! Oh, Ruse, you're doing great, sweetheart. Let's do it. Let's kill the uh, I'm uh, going to kill Ruse. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see here. Uh, that's going to be another 15 damage from Ruse uh, to the displacer beast. Holy shit. Cool, 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 cool. All right, instead of two tentacles going for Ulthus, uh, the Displacer Beast realizes its mistake and is going to make an attack uh, at each of you with its tentacles. Uh, the first one is a 21 to hit Ulthus. Is that hit? Uh, mm, mm, yes, that hits. Thank you for asking. I'm like yeah. a thousand years old, of course. <laughs> no! <laughs> uh, okay, that's 10 points. Uh, oh, sorry. It's six points of bludgeoning or seven points of bludgeoning damage and uh, three points of piercing damage okay. from the critical. Sweet. Oh, I forgot to do his displacement. I always forget. That's fine. Um, and the second one against Roos is, uh, does a uh, 19 hit? Uh, 19 does hit. Yes. Cool. Uh, same thing. I'm just going to do the same damage roll. So 10 points. Copy that. Roos is hurt. All oh, right. Uh, the Displacer Beast looks quite proud of itself. <laughs> and uh, yeah, attacks and like is going to stay in range of Ulthus. Mm -hmm. And next up is Sinet. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to decide if I want to do something fucked up or not. <laughs> Should I do something fucked up? I mean, please do. Okay. That feels um, on brand. It feels on brand. It does it feel on brand. <laughs> oh yeah. Yes. Um 
Okay. Uh, Sunet, we're outside now, right? Uh, you can be if you want to. Is that where everybody else is? Uh, people are kind of flowing outside now. Right now, okay, it's yeah. Who's in Ulfus? I uh, I don't want to get blood all over this a nice lady's house. So, uh, Sunet's gonna step outside. Uh, and pull a vial full of red, thick liquid from her pocket. Uh, and a large circle with it around her. Um, and with my free action, I'm going to be like, uh, everyone inside the circle. Um... And then I'm going to use Summon Greater Demon. <laughs> Amazing! And I'm going to summon a Shadow Demon. <laughs> More people in this fight. I love a thousand things to adjudicate. Cool. Adjudicate. All right. Um, you, yeah. You do that. What does the it look like? It's, it's worth that, it for you, raggedy bitch. <laughs> you raggedy bitch, thank you. It's the nicest thing anyone's ever said to me. Uh, <laughs> uh, she draws draws that circle with the blood on the ground, uh, speaks out to the party as she did, um, and then they stand in the center, and they're speaking celestial, but it sounds like tainted. Like it's like this mix of it's like if if uh, the language of celestial and abyssal were fighting for control over like her mouth, uh, and uh, it sounds garbled and disjointed. Uh, and once again, her eyes roll back in her head, but this time uh, instead of the whites in her eyes, it's it's sort of switching, like fading in and out from white to red to black. Um, and then the shadow demon uh, appears. She's outstretching her arms, and the shadow demon appears behind them, and uh, and is echoing that movement uh, physically. Uh, amazing. Okay. Well, you you summoned a bad boy. Mm. Go ahead and roll initiative for it. I'll add it to the spreadsheet. Great. Thank you. Hee <laughs> hee. <laughs> Uh, initiative, um, that's going to be a 15. Beautiful. Okay. Uh, so at the top of the next, like, yeah, it's, it's inserted into the initiative order. Is there anything else you want to do with the rest of your turn? Mm, no, thank you. Cool. Uh, yeah. This displacer beast that just got body rocked by another fake creature got hit so hard. It remembers that it should be using its displacer feature all the time. And is like, Okay, I'm going to be great next rep. And <laughs> just looks <laughs> over at a shadow demon. And you just see it, like, tuck its tail a little bit. Like, I don't like, I don't like what's happening right now. <laughs> uh, yeah. And next up is Ludwig. Okay. So they're focusing on one of the beasts. And there's a, a second one out and abouts. Yes. Okay. Uh how far away from is it is it from like the the doorway? Uh which one? The 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 one that is not being currently the one that's messed not up. currently being seen, you don't know. Because okay. It's in the other direction and is like away, it's walking it's walking around the part of the house that doesn't have any uh eyeline on it. If if I Use 40 feet of movement. Can I get to at least visual range of it? Yeah, you can get out the house and look out. Go ahead and make a perception check for me with advantage because you are. I already have advantage with my. Well, then uh, never mind. I was trying to be nice. Fuck off. Wow. 15. (laughs) Yeah. With a 15, uh, you see like this, this fog actually makes it pretty hard to see, but the rustle of the leaves where the wind passes by, it looks one way, and then you see part of the rustle t- curves towards the south, towards the door, and you have an eye line on the second displacer beast that is about 30 feet away from you. Cool. Uh, that's that's perfect. Uh, so I see it. I grip my sword, and then you see anyone watching sees Ludwig take a step as I cast Misty Step. 
and and I just turn into mist and I form right right next to it. Nice. And I just I'm just gonna bring my 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 big old great sword down on it. Okay, please attack with disadvantage because okay. that's what makes this blazer piece cool. And I forgot that. All right, with disadvantage is an 18. Yeah, it still hits. All right, so that'll be, let's see, with that, plus it's my first uh, hit on this uh, this turn. So that's a total of uh, 15 damage just coming down yes. with the, the first attack. Okay. And then, uh, so he like steps, comes, like forms next to it and just like with a big massive powerful strike and then swings around and goes for a second strike with this advantage uh, uh no not disadvantage this time once you hit it okay you've located it until the end of the 15 yeah 15 still hits all right so he he comes back with the second like the slice along its uh, its flank and does uh nine damage beautiful okay uh as you hit it the second time, it looks up at you with eyes that seem to be flitting between like a very feline eye to like a sort of horizontal pupil goat eye to a human eye that like narrows and it keeps flashing uh, between them and it locks eyes with you and you feel it attempt to press in on you telepathically. Would you like to accept the charges and have a conversation? Ooh. Hmm. No. <laughs> and it looks, it kind of quirks an eye at you quizzically as it's incapable of like pressing in and reaching you and sort of like slinks down and prepares to attack you on its turn, which will be never because it rolled so goddamn low. Uh, I forgot, I skipped over Fib accidentally. So let's let's rock fib into the initiative really here. I, I know I'm sorry. I'm a monster. Oh, sorry. Uh, uh, fib once again draws twig sword, pulls it. I mean, how big could this cigarette even be? And uh, pulls it from his lip and goes, "Oh, you want to mess around with a real tough guy, huh?" And flies in and is going to take the help action. So just giving the help action to whoever. Amazing. Uh, are you aiming for Roscoe, the one that got just absolutely shit wrecked by Roos? I'm doing. I'm doing the one that 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 Roos has been uh, yeah. focusing okay. on. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Uh, Fib like slides into the cut. Is awesome. Fan favorite. Anna, you hear people like laughing and clapping and snapping. Some people in the back are like, yeah, fuck yeah, Fib. <laughs> Just fan favorite Fib in the back of your uh, overcrowded brain right now. <laughs> and uh, Petra, you're up. Right. I uh trying to think of where I am in the world. Yes, uh we. Uh I am up. It is my turn. Um <laughs> keep forgetting about the voices. Yeah, same. I'm like, oh wait, wait, wait. <laughs> um, okay, great. Um, I am going to go for um Roscoe. Um yes, yes. Um and I'm gonna I'm gonna take a swing. I'm gonna take a, a Macy a Macy swing. Yeah, like we're on the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. Okay, um, a seventeen and a fifteen. <laughs> uh, a seventeen and a fifteen both hit. Okay, great, cool. Then I'm gonna roll some damage. I'll take it. Ooh, nice. Um, do 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 do. That's a ten. And a, I can do math, seven. Nice. Uh, this poor displacer beast is looking very rough. And you see it look over at Roos. And then Roos turns over to you. And uh, I need you to make a wisdom saving throw as Roos attempts to uh, telepathically intrude on your brain. You know, like Eos used to do. <laughs> I don't know who that Aww. is. <laughs> A 18? With an 18, uh, do you reject this, like, 
sort no, of vibe. I shall I shall enjoy someone touching me from the inside out. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Please take inspiration because I hated that sentence, like Gary, every part of it. I'm like a thousand years old and I'm still not old enough to hear that. That was, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> and uh, yeah, you hear this voice that sounds a lot like what you think Anna would sound like when she was grown up. Just say, what are you doing? What do you want? What are you trying to accomplish here? Je suis uh, just uh, simple things. I just want to uh, be free. I don't understand the, the journey. We have I would love to free you. I am trying to. Why are you resisting me? I'm sorry. Uh, this. What, yeah. Mm. We uh, explain. Uh, kiss, kiss, say, please stand down. I'm trying to resolve this, and you all keep fighting everything I send. And so, you want me to do less? Uh, that's as easy. Could you? <laughs> Thank yes, you. I can rest. I'll if take a nap. Rest, I promise I will give you all of the oh, cheese. What do you want? Fromage. Merci. Oh. Love it. Yeah, just go inside. Walk away. This will all be over soon if you just walk away. All I have to do is leave. All you have to do is leave. Excellent, and uh, it's, all will be well. All will be well. I promise. But this is after you present to me my dinner? You, you want a dinner? Yes. <laughs> I was. I thought I was a guest. Yes. Oh, yeah. Um... You know what? I will get you all the smoked meats and pâtés that you could desire. And while that's on its way, can you do me a favor? Can you just stand in front of Anna? We don't want her getting hurt or anything, right? Just Shall I cast a spell before I do this? Will that help? If I do a spell of oh, protection for Anna? Uh, you know what? Maybe not protection, no. So uh, I could stand in front of her and protect her with a spell. Oh, no. I just, uh, just stay in her eye line. That would be great. Thank you. I feel like I can't trust what is happening. I don't know why you would say that. I am so trustable. I hate this accent. I don't want to do it. <laughs> Guys, how do we get her to stop? I know I'm talking. I'm talking to Petra. They, they want dinner. Fuck! I would like Just at least it's going to be down. at least it's going to be at least eight courses, yes. Yeah, eight courses. Go sit at the table because you have to have to prep it, a, a bush, bush and then you have the wine, and then you have you know. Do you have any allergies? I'd like an ordev or, or two. No, of course, allergies. What is that? What is even that? Down. And the connection severs. <laughs> <laughs> Shut it down. Does Petra stay or do they leave the fight? Petra's ambivalent and is just going to stay and watch because I am unsure if I should leave for real because I do not trust anyone or anything. Perfect. Never were words more true in my life. <laughs> <laughs> I do hear and feel that on a cellular level. <laughs> All right. So you got some good hits in and now you are standing by. Uh, Anna, you're up. Uh, uh, and sorry, did Fib grant that help action already to Petra? No, you can have it. Go for it. Okay, copy that. Um, uh, amazing. Cool. Uh, so this first attack is going to be with advantage. Um, and uh, I'm going to do Eldritch Blast. Um, so we're going to have an Eldritch Blast happen first. Um, and that's going to be... Hold on one second. Uh, so do I have disadvantage on attacking these displacer beasts? No, right no, now? no. Uh, now that they've both been hit, they don't have their uh, displacer ability until the end of the next turn. Gotcha. Okay. They understand. are normal, very hittable uh, creatures. Okay, so the first one's going to be a 27. Absolutely next, hits. Next Eldritch Blast is going to be a 16. Yeah, both hit. Copy that. Hold on one second. We're going to roll this damage here real quick. First one is... Going to be a an eleven. Next one is going to be uh, another eleven. So twenty two damage overall as Anna 
uh, as I'm, I'm going to Eldritch Blast this Displacer Beast. What does Anna's uh, Eldritch Blast look like? I weirdly don't know if... I think it looks different than it ever has before. Um, I think I think I just go and speak to not only everybody, but any voices listening, being like, you shouldn't have explained to me that this world's not real because my magic's going to get a lot more powerful. Okay. And I'm going to blast that Eldritch Blast twice. And I think it looks like it's tearing reality open. I think they're like it's like green fairy magic, but it's like opening seams in our world of like, there's worlds behind this world. Like, this, like what am I able to do if none of this is real? Yeah. Um, uh, and then as a bonus action. Well, hold on. Hold on. You don't have to keep hitting this one thing. Because okay, gotcha. That last blast, uh, you said tearing, and I took it uh, literally. As you blast the displacer beast down and it scatters away, there's this massive jagged cut in it that immediately stops bleeding and opens up like a tear in reality. And you see past it, into it, Anna, is the face of the lady above, of Marionette, looking back at you. And she looks pissed. And she reaches forward and grabs the air. And you feel everyone else freeze. And you are stuck in this moment. The color drains from everything around the two of you, except for that green kudzu that gets brighter and more vibrant as she pushes herself open through this gash in reality, this gash in the displacer beast and stands in front of you once more, exasperated. Anna, we can't keep doing this. Do you mean that in a real way or do you mean that in a how you feel way? Because I oh, think we can keep doing this. You're so fucking clever. <sighs> this, look, you are I don't know how you broke through, but it was cute before and it's exhausting now. And all of our efforts to recall you seem to be for naught. And she kind of steps through and as her like down clears, she like kicks the car carcass of the displacer beast with the back of her heel and it just shoots up and disappears into the kudzu wall. I'm broadcasting all of this to my friends. I know I'm stopped in time, but I want all of them to see this interaction. I want all of them to see the displacer beast go. I am trying to give them as much of this moment as I can. All of um, you hear all of this and you are looped in. You can speak though. You cannot move. Um, I'm going to look at Marionetta and say, these things that are annoying you aren't our problem. You made us real because you thought it would be funny. You could have played a game where we were really fake. You could have played a game where we didn't have wishes and hopes and dreams, but you thought it would make the game more fun if we could feel things and have a heart and soul. Maybe next time you won't make such a cruel game. You're putting a lot of this onto me. And I, you know what? Fuck it. Fine. If you need to know the truth, then here it is. And each of you standing in front of you in this light that if you were able to blink, you would be able to look away from, but you are having your retinas burned out by the images of yourselves, your true selves projected in front of you. And you're watching without hearing uh, the sort of conversations, gesturing as you describe what you all look like now. Ulthus, you see this creature standing in front of you, describing something with a long dragonborn face, uh, gesturing like crackles of, of electricity, hunching themselves over, describing the age each of you sees this, the description of the thing you are now by something you can barely comprehend. And Marionette looks at you, Anna, and says, you picked this. You think that we did this to you? We are you. 
You are petulant actors that have forgotten themselves and are now causing me, us, yourself, a very big pain in my ass. You wanted to tell a story about a sweet little kid that went on an adventure. You thought it would be funny for someone with a good heart to be in danger and get hurt all the time? Isn't that cruel of you? I disavow that me. I thought it would be funny to make a better me as a joke, but the better me is in charge now. And I might be fake and the other me might be real, but the other me is mean and I'm nice. And I think nice is more important than real. Uh, and I want to attack Marionetta in front of me. Sweet. Uh, go ahead and make your attack with advantage as Marionetta is reaching. And uh, she reaches under her eyes, sees tears, and looks horrified and disgusted by them. Uh, that's going to be a 24 to hit. Hits. Um, and the next one's going to be a 25. I'll roll damage again. Um, that's going to be uh, 12 plus uh, 15 is 27. 27 points of damage rip through this, whatever she is, you or your patron or your tormentor. And she like flies towards you and grabs you by the face. She gets on her knees to look you right in your eyes and says, I, uh, and she's squeezing you so tightly, Anna, and says, this is all I can offer. If you want to be shot of this, fine, but the rest aren't choosing this. Send them back and I will let you, and you hear the word you, us, and me simultaneously. Stay here if that's what you want. But you have to let them go. Um, I'm going to say in all of my, to all of my friends, you don't owe your creators anything. Bringing a life into the world, whether it's a dream or not, that life always belongs to itself. Uh, and I'm going to attempt to like barrel out of this reality with Marionetta to get the threat away from my friends. Okay. Um, I need everyone to make a wisdom saving throw. The DC is 25. The thing that you are seeing defies the ability to be understood. <laughs> well, <laughs> did anyone make it? 30, 20. 22. No. No. Anna, you grab yourself back in a mirror of the grip and you pull her into you. And the doubling of this, the part of you that has only ever known this world, the prime material plane, has likened it, has tried to understand it, like putting a portable hole inside of a bag of holding, that you have doubled dimensional spaces and sort of disrupted them both. And you pull yourself away and out of this cycle. You understand, truly understand where you are and how long lived you are and the person that you were before, before you came to here and that little seed of change, the thing that you've nurtured and grown over constant dives and the facing of mortality and you remove yourself from it. But the detonation disrupts all of that kudzu, leaves nothing but a loamy black, soil crater a mile wide in this area and the rest of you are torn asunder and you come back up back to consciousness not as Ulthus and Ludwig and Senate and Petra 
but as your true selves. And you look down at your hands, your true hands, feeling the full extent of your physicality and your ability in this space, standing on this stage in front of riotous applause, standing ovations, flowers being thrown at you, praises being sung and screamed and cheered at you as all of the trappings of that mortal life that you just experienced fall away from you, clothing and items like black sand in your hands and with it, the forgetting, the loss. You don't remember that there were five of you. You don't remember what you did. You don't remember that last moment where you tore through and saw not just this reality, but all realities and the understanding of the games you play for an audience, an audience that loves you, but for a sport. And as you remember yourselves, you look over and you see a little stage manager uh, leaning towards a mic, lean back, <clears throat> closes a book of the narrative that you just lived, gives you a little thumbs up, gestures you forward and kind of is reminding you like, take a bow. We got to wrap this up. There's something else coming. Hurry up. You bow, you accept the accolades, the charms you see up in the balcony, in the pride of place, a beautiful gilt uh, and marble covered throne, a figure crowned, big hair, bigger clothing, but face obscured, politely claps, throws a single rose, casually flicks it, it lands at your feet with enough gravity to dent and actually shatter the front part of this stage. Tremendous acclaim for a story well told. And you look out past the sea of people, past this open air auditorium, and you look out at your home, the garden tone, the place that you know as the Court of Thorns. And that's where we're gonna wrap up. Woo! Hooray! Hooray, hooray! <laughs> So that well, was our little preview of what we're going to be doing. Sorry, Dom. Did no, I off? continue. You're, it's great. Well done, everybody. Cool, cool, cool. Ooh. So uh, thank you all so much for playing and thank you for watching. And thank you, my beautiful Faye audience, for helping decide what we we're going to do with our players. Uh, before we wrap up and Dom gives an outro, let's let's do a quick run around of where everyone can be found. Let's start with our guest, Brennan. Brennan, thank you so much. Hi. Oh, what a joy playing with you all. This was such a hoot. Oh, my gosh. Uh, at Brennan LM on Twitter, at Brennan Lee Mulligan on Instagram. Uh, you can come check out Dimension 20, which is Dropout.tv's actual play show. New episode every Wednesday. Woohoo! Yeah. Eric. Uh, you can catch me mostly Eric on all the social medias and Twitch where I stream. And then you can catch me here in about mm, half an hour for uh, New Pantheon Academia, our, our anime inspired kids with, with God powers at, uh, show. Yeah. yeah. Terry. Oh, hey guys, Terry Gamble here. You can find me at the Terry Gamble on all the social medias. And um, I do a bunch of stuff and I forgot right now this week what is happening, but I know I've got podcasts and another podcast on other podcasts, I think, how it's going to go this week. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, and yeah, totally Terry. That's my new name on Twitch coming soon. <laughs> Changed it. So hope you guys are excited uh, making a show. I Thanks. want that 90s sitcom so badly. Yes. That's what we're <laughs> doing. It's a totally Terry. Yeah, love it. Yes. I need a Vanna right oh. along. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Vanna. Uh, hello. Hi, I'm Vanna. I stream full time on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Vanna. That's V-A-N-A. Uh, and we are uh, currently running a 5th uh, edition Dungeons and Dragons game based on Icewind Dale, Rime of the Frost Maiden, called From Dust Till Dark. That is every Tuesday at 3 p.m. ET with a really amazing cast. So you hope you can uh, tune in for that. And uh, we'll be back with Salt Bay next week. Is that correct? Nope. Nope. No. Do we know when? No. no. Nope. Stay we'll tuned. Follow me on Twitter. I'll let you know. Twitter.com slash Havanarama. H-A-V-A-N-A-R-A-M-A. And I'll I'll be the first to tell you. I'll probably be the fourth to tell you, but I'll tell you. 
eventually. <laughs> Next. Hi, I'm Neko Oryx. Uh, you can find me on all socials because I got my TikTok account changed. I'm Neko Oryx on everything now. Yay! Uh, that is N-E-G-A-O-R-Y-X. Um, if you like tabletop RPG stuff, which I assume you do if you're here, I'm also a uh, cast member on Witchcraft and Wizardry on the Table Story channel. It is a homebrew system set in the world of Hogwarts, and that is at 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern on Tuesdays. I play a second year Gryffindor student named Olive Everglade uh, and just come on through and say hi sometime I stream I do hosting stuff I'm, I'm never sleeping and always doing something so thank you for having me Abria you are the coolest person on the face of this earth and I don't know how you made this the most incredible episode zero ever but this was awesome need to meet way more people but i will accept the compliment from <laughs> no she knows a lot of people i'm gonna be straight up like nega Thank actually you. knows a lot of people um, i also know a lot of people and i agree with her stop i, I refuse this praise and ref i refuse to be per perceived by it. i don't know words anymore i use them all up for <laughs> and i can feel like the day quill has worn off and it's just sleep time now. Hi, I'm Abria. Uh, I've been your GM. Uh, you can follow me on social media at Quiddy, Q-U-I-D-D-I-E. Right now, you can catch me on Mondays uh, playing Rhyme of the Frost Maiden on D&D's Twitch channel with Chaos Initiative at 1 p.m. Pacific. And on Fridays, playing uh, Failed Save, which is a D&D actual play uh, on Pixel Circus at 6 p.m. Uh, other than that, I have a, a podcast called Storybenders. It's Avatar The Last Airbender. We don't update regularly because I am bad at this. Uh, and there's really cool stuff in the pipeline including uh, Salt Bay coming back soon. So just keep an eye on my socials for, for awesome big announcements. That's it. Dom, take us away. <laughs>